150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alpecin Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Good morning. Good morning. What are you waiting for? It's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Hello and welcome to the Zwift Academy Finals. Over the next five days, cycling's hottest new talent from around the globe will be competing head-to-head -head in the fight for a professional cycling contract. Each day, our finalists will face gruelling training rides or races, both in real life and on the virtual roads of Zwift, designed to find out who will be best suited to professional racing. However, there's also going to be nowhere to hide, so any weaknesses they have, are also going to be exposed. Now, for the first time this year, both the female finalists and the men's will be here on the Zwift Academy house in the beautiful cycling paradise that is Mallorca. Yes, when the finalists arrive, they will be given either a Canyon Aero provided by Alpecin Phoenix or a Canyon Ultimate provided by Canyon SRAM plus the matching team kits. However, only two riders will get to keep them because there are just two contracts oh. up for grabs. That is actually for the lunch menu, it's also upside down. Well, I know, I mean, it's an illustration. They, they wouldn't actually give me the contract if I'm not surprised yet, just in case I signed it. Anyway, the riders, as you said, have five days to impress the judges, and they're on their way here now. Let's meet the people deciding the fates of our finalists. The pro team bosses and coaches who will be making the all important decision of who is good enough to go pro. From Canyon SRAM, we have sports director Beth Durier and performance director Lars Teutenberg. And from Alps in Phoenix, performance director Christoph de Kegel and team manager Christoph Rodoft. In Alps in Phoenix, we are literally looking for uh, guys who are uh, yeah, performing. Uh, at World Tour level? Yeah, we have every day really hard challenges here and that will bring them on the limit. I like efficient, smart riders who adapt to the situation. We are really looking uh, to see some aggressive racing because that is really what our team is also standing for. This is their only chance to, to shine, so they, they have to approach every, every single day, every single challenge with wanting to win the pro contract. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. We have of course five competitors, only one contract to gain and that's how it is. As well as the coaches watching their every pedal stroke, they'll also need to impress their future teammates, the superstars of Canyon SRAM and Alpecin Phoenix. Oh, look at this! It had to be a classy rider that would win it at the end of the day and there's none bigger than this man. No pressure, finalists. From my point of view, I'm just focusing on somebody who just has a very good energy and is sympathetic and loyal. And because like at the end of the day, you realize that the team spirit is very important. So I feel like that's what I'm after. Yeah, today um, we might put in some uh, some surprise attacks just to see how they react. If they react, then uh, yeah, it would be cool. And two riders completing their first ever pro cycling season. Last year's Zwift Academy winners, Neve Bradbury, and Jay Vine. To, to get the opportunity in 2021 and to race pro races and race the Volta, it, it was, it, his mates changed my life. I mean, the finals weren't like this. We were all at our homes. It was quite, it was all virtual. But yeah, I ended up winning and now I'm here living the dream with uh, Canyon Tram. And now it's time to meet our finalists. Holy smokes, mate. That is like a castle. We've never seen something like that. It's like we're back in ancient times, man. <laughs> G'day guys, I'm Alex Bonia, I'm 19 and I come from Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. 
Yeah, can't wait to get stuck in, eh? Oh, man. <laughs> it's me sick, bro. Yeah, I started cycling um, when I was about 14 with the mountain bike club. Uh, and then I did like a bit of national racing there and I went on to the road a few years after that. Come on, Alex. Uh, so I've had quite a few nicknames over the years. So Mullet God, uh, Flying Mullet. What's another one? Like Boggo. And my most recent one's been Zwift Lord <laughs> since getting onto the academy. So it's been pretty funny. The Alperson car, man, yo, and Canyon. <laughs> Trend, that's sick. Oh, I can see the bikes too. Man, they're looking so drip. <laughs> oh, man. Look at the cars. Alperson and Canyon, wow. Man, this is so excited, man. I'm so serious. <gasps> oh, this one's got my name, no way. Full aero, disc brakes, Shimano DI2. Oh, wicked. Oh, this is sick. Whoa, no way, this beach house is awesome. <laughs> the scenery here and the roads and like, oh, I just can't wait. You know, it's gonna be the best experience ever. All of it still feels so surreal and that I, I just feel so lucky that I'm here. My name's Imogen Alton. I'm 24 years old and I'm from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. We've been kind of not left in the dark, but I think they I think they want surprises. I used to compete as an elite rower. I stopped rowing because I fell out of love with the sport. I lost that passion and drive, but I found that joy in the coffee rides and in the socialness that riding gave me. A couple of team cars up ahead. Ooh. It, like it literally just looks like Mamma Mia. Like I feel like Meryl Streep right now. I'm so excited. I cannot. Oh my God, they've got names. And it's my favorite color. Oh my God. I think so. Oh, it's blue. That's so freaking cool. Hello. How are you going? <laughs> Good, I'm Alex. Imogen, nice, nice to meet you. Holy. Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? I'll just take it. Look at that. Like, let's go outside. Oh my God. So what sick. the hell? <laughs> wow. Beach at our front door. I oh, know, it's so sick. Yeah, a couple recovery walks on the beach. Don't mind if I do, thank you. Yeah, to make the Zwift Academy finals is huge. I'm Cooper Sayers, I'm 22 and I'm from Adelaide, Australia. Yeah, I reckon they're gonna be pretty fast roads, very hilly, but looks like a cyclist paradise. Uh, so in 2020, Jay Vine was my Nero teammate. Seeing him win the Zwift Academy last year was, wasn't a surprise. It'd be incredible to follow in Jay's yeah, footsteps. That's crazy. It's pretty nice. <laughs> That's so sick. Hey. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract and I put in all the hard work and I'm not gonna, I'm not going home without it. I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it, uh, to see it, but also for the week. Uh, I am Maud Oudeman, I'm 18 years old and I'm from Nijmegen, the Netherlands. Well, I started cycling when I was almost 14 years old. Uh, I was always dancing and I wanted to try something else. Um, so I started with triathlon and then in 2020, so last year, I uh, focused fully on cycling. For now, my dad makes my trainings. So yeah, he's kind of like my coach, but he just makes uh, the trainings I'm doing. Wow. Can I take it off? Yeah. Can't wait to ride. <laughs> I really cannot wait. Hello. Hi. Hey, uh, I'm just going to do my very best and get everything out of myself. 
Something special. This is hey? really beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited to get started. It's uh, an unreal opportunity. My name is Sam Hill. I'm 26 years old and I'm from New South Wales, Australia. It's unreal. It's a totally different landscape out here. I'm racing for Team Nero Continental, which is a Sydney-based national road series team. Uh, the team of last year's winner, Jay Vine, and the team of my competitor this year, Cooper Sayers. Wow, I can see the ocean already. We're staying right on the beach here. Alps and Phoenix car and all. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, everyone's already here. <laughs> It'll be a battle to the death and I think everyone's gonna throw everything they've got at it. There can only be one winner, so, you know, starting tomorrow, it's gonna to be war. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm excited to be here in Mallorca. Um, I'm Rachel Wales. I'm from Queensland, Australia, and I'm 23 years old. Yeah, I grew up doing triathlon in Perth, West Australia. I was always quite strong on the bike um, and I always enjoyed um, when I wasn't racing in the season for triathlon, I'd do like the occasional road race or like time trial or crit. I'm so excited about the pro ground track because, well, it is my dream. I'm Willemijn, Willemijn Prince. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Zwolle, the Netherlands. Uh, I became Dutch champion on Swift in 2018. Well, I already wanted to do the Swift Academy then, but I was way too young. And finally I could join the real Swift Academy and uh, got the final spot, so I'm very happy. <laughs> A little Spain village or something like that. Wow, what amazing bikes. Oh my God, this is mine. I don't have this kind of bike at home. <sighs> amazing. <laughs> Oh, it's, I'm super excited to be here. It's an uh, opportunity of a lifetime. My name is Warren Munton. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah, I've been riding full time for the past five years. Just been chasing the dream of becoming a pro since. Uh, coming from South Africa, we don't necessarily have the opportunities that riders based in Europe do. The Zwift Academy is just an awesome opportunity to yeah, showcase what we actually have to offer. Oh man, this, this can't be real. Oh man, it's really happening. I can't believe this is happening. It has got everything top of the range. Jura Ace, everything. My name is uh, Mads Rabik and I'm uh, 26 years old and I'm from Herning in Denmark. I, when I was a, a junior, I got uh, selected for the Danish uh, national team, and I was riding with uh, names like uh, Mats Petersen and Mats Wirtz and Niklas E and guys that's on the world tour now. You don't get these opportunities like this uh, very often or never <laughs> again. I feel I'm ready to, to compete and, and give, it, uh, give it all. Let the best man win. My name's Caitlin Conyers. I'm 31 and I'm from Bermuda. Uh, so I started riding in about 2017, at the time I was working as a lawyer. Uh, so I quit my job at the end of 2019 moved to Arizona in 2020 to train full-time. I think it would just make it tangible for people that come from a small island like Bermuda that there is a pathway to becoming a pro cyclist. With the finalists settling into life in the beach house, myself and Sai thought we'd drop by to wish them luck before the competition gets going. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi. How are you all doing? 
How are you Great. feeling? Good. 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 Very yeah. good. We just wanted to say that for the two people that are fortunate enough to get pro contracts, it never gets as good as this in hotels that you stay no. in. <laughs> like, this is amazing. Yes. Yeah, we won't hold you up anymore. Please crack on. You must be starving. Yeah. And uh, we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Have a good Thank meal. Thank you. Cheers. All our finalists are now safely tucked up inside the Zwift Academy house, counting down the hours until kickoff. And they're going to need all the rest they can get because there is a very long and potentially life changing week ahead. Mm. I can't imagine how excited, but also how nervous they must be feeling in there right now. And that actually is in spite of a piece of information we've deliberately withheld from them. Well, yes. So the final decisions on pro contracts will be taken on day five, but there will be an elimination on day three and day four, where the weakest of the finalists will be sent home early. Right, let's go to the bar. Well, hang on a minute. I'm going to, um, I'm going to see if I can find Matthew van der Poel. I wonder if you want a game of ping pong. You've got to give him some space, mate. Well, You've I, been following him around all day. Well, I will do, because Cassia Nuiadoma gets here soon. But um, anyway, I'll catch you later, mate. All right, I'll see you at the bar. Good morning, finalists. And so it begins, it is competition time. Eight of you are going to leave here, very sore legs, but hopefully memories to last a lifetime. But two of you are going to leave here as professional cyclists, knowing that in just a few weeks time, you will be competing at some of the world's most prestigious bike races in one of the world's best teams. Over the coming days, you are gonna be tested to your limits to find out if you've got what it takes, not just to go pro, but to also beat the riders standing next to you. Before you head out though, on Mallorca's pristine, if slightly damp tarmac, there is an all important fitness test to do. And in that, you are going to have to push yourselves to your absolute maximum to establish the highest baseline numbers possible, but also to show everybody what you're made of. Before you start though, we are giving you the opportunity to get some tips from some experts experts that might also be your future teammates. So if you could welcome last year's Zwift Academy winners, Neve Bradbury and Jay Vine, and also Kashi Numiadoma and Matthew van der Poel. Welcome along, guys. Hey. Right then, so we've got an hour until the start of the fitness test. So should we grab a coffee, have a bit of a chat, and then it's game time. Although Zwift fitness tests don't win races, they will definitely help our judges decipher the physiology of our finalists. And whilst good results here won't guarantee good race results, it is almost impossible to succeed as a pro without displaying this raw potential. So our contestants will need to turn themselves inside out to prove that they've got what it takes. There is a lot at stake here already on day one. This is the Zwift Arena, the battleground for fitness tests and Zwift races across the week of the finals. This particular test is available as a structured workout on Zwift. Now, if we go back to basics, how it works is that the rider's bikes are attached to indoor trainers that are providing resistance to the pedals. But crucially, these are smart trainers. So they're also recording the rider's power output and transmitting that to a computer or a laptop or a phone, a tablet that will be running Zwift, which is a virtual reality online cycling platform. And so the rider's avatars will be moving accordingly on screen. The test is designed to measure key aspects of a rider's physiology. Their sprint power, their anaerobic power over three minutes, plus two slightly longer, more aerobic efforts of six and 10 minutes. Now this is gonna give us a complete power profile for each rider, but how well they're able to recover between each effort is also critically important. For the fitness test, finalists will be riding the virtual roads of Watopia, taking on the Fuego Flats course. Okay, guys, your test is one hour and 33 minutes long. Give it everything. You know which are the intervals that you need to hit. Every watt counts, every second counts. So give it everything you've got. I will count you in. Three, two, one, go. Good luck, lads. 
So this is the calm before the storm. They've done their warm up and they've spent the last two minutes riding incredibly easy at half a watt per kilo. But any second now, they're about to start their maximum effort 21 second seated sprint. Here we go. Go on, guys. Go, 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 go. That's it. Well done. Come on. Yes. Come on, guys. Go, 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 go. That's it, well done, guys. Great effort, great effort. Right then, 30 seconds to go until effort number two. It's the three minute. Which I think is the hardest. What numbers do you want to see then? Uh, I think we're going to see close to 600 with some of them. 600 on average? Yeah. Well, I think it's certainly north of 500. Right, you ready? Yep, well done. Come on, come on, come on. That's come on, it, guys. Come on, come on. Give it everything. That's it, well done, guys. Go on, guys. Go, 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 go. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Everything you've got. 15 seconds to go. Come on. Yes. Big numbers. Like Almost it. There. 10 seconds. Everything out. Well done, guys. Come on, five, four, three, two, one. Cracking effort, lads. Well done. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Well done. Okay, guys, six minutes, full gas. Good luck. Come on, every last bit. Looking good, guys, looking good. 30 seconds, finalists, 30 seconds. Come on. Well done, guys. Come on. Almost there. These are some big numbers, guys. Fantastic. Here we go, come on. All the way to the line, come on. Go, 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 let's do it. Well done, boys, well done. That was great. There's just, what, a minute just over before the final 10 minute effort. Now, in terms of actual duration of effort, it's not a huge amount in an hour and a half session, but because everything is maximal, guys are going to be really, really hurting. It's been interesting to see who stayed incredibly focused, like in the zone, and who's sitting up, looking around, maybe joking and stuff. So and it's fascinating how much insight you can get because everyone's on static indoor trainers. You wouldn't get that on an outdoor ride. So, um, so yeah, it's been good. Right, 50 seconds to go. Okay, finalists, it's your final effort. 10 minutes, full gas, you guessed it. We're on to the last 10 minute effort for the guys now. I hear it much of wonderful. You have done some testing on the Zwift yourself, Once, along with 20 once, minutes. Yes, I did a 20 minute test. Yeah. Then I went mountain biking five hours before, ah. and then I did the test, so it was pretty hard. You were slightly fatigued for the test um, itself. Slightly is an understatement. I was pretty fatigued. <laughs> I think it's always hard, especially for those guys. They already did some intervals before this one, so yeah. I imagine uh, it hurts. Go on, guys, let's do it. 25 to go, come on. Come on. Almost there, come on, 20 yeah. seconds. Come on. Come on. We go up, 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 Come on. Here we go. Lift it, come on. Woo, come on. Come on! Fantastic! Well done. Oh, good effort. Well done. Woo. Fantastic. Well done. Probably numbers quite not where like um, they normally are, but you know, there's probably like a few, you know, just travel and stuff, but you know, just there's plenty more days and stuff, so just rip it up and have fun, eh? We just did the fitness test and I definitely went 100%. I feel I'm really happy with how it went. I feel like I got the most out of myself and I finished every effort completely spent, so things couldn't have gone better. With the men's test done, it's now time for the women. Okay, finalists, your test will last for one hour and 33 minutes. You can see your structured intervals in front of you on the screen now. Every time you get to one of the key performance intervals, you need to hit it 100%. It's a full gas effort, but you decide how you pace it. It is important to note that this is not a race between you. However, 
the judges will be using the numbers that you produce in this test to analyse your key physiological metrics. OK, riders, you can start. This is it. In three, two, one, go. Go, 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 go! Come on. 21 seconds, come on. Great effort. Go, 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 go! Come on! Three, two, one! Fantastic effort. Well done. They've got 12 minutes to recover from that one, and then it's a three minute full gas anaerobic effort. Yeah, come on. Well done. Super interesting to see who's managing to pace their effort and who's really dying. They've got 13 seconds to go. Look at their effort. Awesome. Well done. Come on. Go, 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 go. Get it all out. Well done. Great effort. So, Kasha, you have done one inside test before, yeah. I gather, but only one. Is that because it was so grim? You wouldn't do another. <laughs> I think um, the, the time that I did my test was when I was coming straight out of the lockdown. How does the data stack up then compared to your racing data? Uh, it's going to be definitely nice to see the results and compare it kind of to my results, to my words, and see who specializes in what. Dan, this is, this is a tough one now, and it's six minutes off the back of three minutes max, off the back of 21 seconds max. I feel quite bad watching it. Yeah, I, I think although it's a very long test, you know, over 90 minutes, that will go by in a flash because the levels of the concentration are really quite intense. And actually this point as well is where we're going to start getting some really interesting data because it's about, it's about how the riders are recovering from these big yeah. efforts, isn't it? Which is actually as important in a racing situation as being able to put out the numbers in the first place. It is. And now for the final 10 minute effort. Here we go. <laughs> Sit, well done. Well done, 25 seconds to go, come on. Sit, oh, 20 seconds to go. 20 to go, come on. Everything. That's it, that's it. That's it, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, nine. Well done. Great wow. Fantastic. I've never really done anything like a test like that before, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I preferred, I was happier when the shorter efforts were over and it got to the longer stuff. Uh, I felt good throughout it. Um, I liked the three minute probably the best. Nearly chanted halfway through that, so yeah, I think it was pretty evident that I, I went full gas. With the fitness tests over, it's now time to hear the thoughts of our judges. So let's go from left to right as we were watching them on the uh, platform there today. Uh, Rachel, now it's very easy to take stuff from the numbers that you're seeing on screen and the averages over various intervals that they did. However, I guess we've got to remember that she is quite significantly lighter than the rest. So, so how did she get on? Yeah, she was uh, stronger on the longer um, intervals towards the end. Uh, kind of expected with her size and weight. Uh, so moving on to Caitlin, uh, the oldest of the female finalists. We were really surprised with Caitlin because she, she was very strong in the sprints and that was definitely not expected from our side when we were watching her. Like her numbers were impressive and also the teammates that were watching, we were very surprised. Uh, then in the centre, we had Imogen. She went deep in that test today, didn't she? She showed where her strength is and it was uh, in the middle, it was a three minute interval. Her pain face at the end of each interval was next by level. far, yeah, by far next level and it, it continued actually after the interval had finished. Uh, so on to Maud. She was putting out the numbers 
going through the intervals, looking around the crowd, but actually just like enjoying the moment. So it was very impressive to see that she could do that in that situation, that under that stress to be able to put out the numbers, but really enjoy the moment. Uh, so lastly, over on the right hand side, we have our other 18 year old, Willemine. Yeah, she's more a sprinter type of rider and or short, short duration. And uh, that was clearly visible. Right, well, yeah, I thought that was a really good first day, if slightly brutal, for the five finalists there today. A lot of potential, for sure, in all of them. I thought they all did incredibly well. Uh, but you've got to go away and crunch a few more numbers now, a little bit more in depth, because later on, we want to find out who your rider of the day is. Christoph and Christoph, we have seen our male finalists turning themselves inside out, I'd say. What are your first impressions Five really strong riders. Impressive uh, performance today. Now, if we start with the individual riders, we'll go from, from left to right as we were looking at them. We had Cooper. What were your, what were your first thoughts from looking at his data? Strong overall, but all, all of the riders. Um, the only thing is he, he overcooked him a bit, I guess, in, the, in his first uh, three minutes hard effort. Uh, the positive thing is that in his three minute hard effort, that it was a good effort. So we just need to see a bit later uh, if he really overcooked it, how his resistance to the fatigue is during the other efforts. And what about Mast then? I was particularly impressed with how cool and level headed he seemed to be. He stayed calm. Yeah. His screen went off, but it just continued like nothing was happening. So that was already some. For me, it's something really important to see. Did you notice, did you say that maybe during the sprint, he might not have been in the, in the he drop? Was but... <laughs> he was cheating. He was three centimeters above the saddle. It yes. makes him a real rider, a real cyclist. <laughs> maybe it is. And what about Sam? He is maybe, on what we've seen now, the most time trialist type of guy that is in now. Yeah. The only thing that was a bit strange was his low cadence in the... Oh. Uh, in his efforts. Right, so Alex then, I mean, in this picture here, that's quite the mullet. Um, is there a place on Alps in Phoenix for mullets? Or uh, are you quite glad he's had a haircut? Pass <laughs> the question to Christoph. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We have to mention that he's still very, very young. And he is a really punchy rider. He recovered very well and very, very soon and uh, fast. OK, so let's move on to Byron then. He was fully focused in his cocon yeah. and he was able to to hurt himself a lot. So every day we are asking you to select your rider of the day. So we have a, a male and a female finalist of the day. And so perhaps having had this discussion now, you two can go away, have a think, and then before tonight's get together, you can nominate the person that you feel just leading the way. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, that is pretty much day one done and dusted. Now, something else that we haven't told you yet, we're about to tell you now, is that every day we have asked the judges from the pro teams, Alps and Phoenix and Canyon Sram, to name their rider of the day. Now, they've said that this is a seriously difficult job. They would like to stress that the standard this year is seriously high. But we didn't let them get away with that cop-out. We pressed further. So I will start with our male rider of the day. And so, congratulations to Cooper today. Well done, mate. <laughs> right, so the, the reason being, the judges said uh, they loved the way that you absolutely attacked that fitness test. They, they sensed that perhaps you kind of overheated a little bit after the three minute one, but then they really admired your, your courage and your commitment to see it through and still deliver some big numbers on the six and the 10. So, uh, so well done, Cooper. Yeah, well done to you. All uh, right, female rider for day one is Maud. Congratulations, Maud. Congratulations. Yeah, really impressive numbers, the coaches thought throughout, but particularly in the final couple of efforts when there was already a lot of fatigue that had set in. So great stuff. Yeah, now for the remaining eight of you, rest assured that there is still everything to play for. Tomorrow is another day, more tests to come. So for now, enjoy the evening, kick back, relax, mingle with your potential future teams and future teammates. And, uh, and well done again for a 
great day across the board. Yeah. Uh, well, that was an action-packed first day here at the Zwift Academy Finals, and our coaches now have a very firm grasp as to the numbers that the riders are able to produce indoors. Next up, though, we're going to go onto real-life roads. See how they get on there with the superstars that are here in Mallorca. Yeah. You riding, mate? Very good, side. Thanks. Yeah. Should we go to the bar? Well, I would, but I was going to go and see if Matthew Vanderpool fancied it. Just a quick game of Monopoly. So I'll probably join you later if that's right. You've got to give this up, Si. No, no, honestly. He, I've heard he's really, he's well up for it. He might end up a stalker. He's a competitor. 150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alperson Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Well done, Marley. What are you waiting for? It's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Coming up. The finalists take on the pros. Today we're gonna do a sprint lead out. Would be a bit embarrassing if we lose this one. There's heartbreak at the hill climb. Devastated. <laughs> and the pro team coaches have some tough decisions to make. All of a sudden, he can do it. Hello and welcome back to the Zwift Academy Finals, where once again our contestants will be aiming to prove themselves to the judges in a bid to become a professional cyclist. As the sun is rising behind us here in Mallorca, the riders will be busy kitting up for what's ahead, so I guess we better go along there and tell them almost everything they're going to be doing on the bike today. Good morning. 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 Hope you're all feeling nice, fresh and recovered after yesterday because today you have got a long day in the saddle. You're going to have a fast endurance ride with some intense intervals and some skills based tests. That's right. So the coaches are going to be scrutinising your bike handling ability as well as how you can perform key skills that you'll be faced with in a pro race. So, you're gonna have a fast pace line and there's gonna be a sprint. You will not be riding alone today. You will be joined by members of Canyon SRAM and Alps in Phoenix. So, female finalists, you will be riding alongside Elise Chabby and also Neve Bradbury. So, not only can you strut your stuff, you can also learn from two of the best. Mm. Male finalists, you're actually gonna be joined by five riders from Alps in Phoenix today. And so, midway through, you're going to go head to head against them in a sprint lead out. You will need to decide the order of that lead out and indeed who's going to try and beat Tim Malier, Giro and Tour de France stage winner and one of the fastest riders in the world. Yeah, now if you need any tips, then uh, Dan and I will be available for a short period of time. We can tell you what not to do and also how to lose every sprint every time. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, riding with guys like uh, Van der Poel and uh, Tim Merlier, it's not every day you get to do that. I think it's about a four hour endurance ride. Um, with, I think there'll be multiple like tests and challenges along the way um, from what we've heard. <laughs> it's going to be nice to catch up with them, chat with them, um, get to know them a bit better and for sure today uh, we'll see a bit more um, how they how they handle on, uh, yeah, on, the, on the open roads. So today we're gonna do a sprint lead out. We're gonna do it with the pros against the Zwift final uh, academists. So 
I think it would be a bit embarrassing if we lose this one, so we're going to try and uh, do our best to set Tim up for a good sprint and take the win. The fast endurance ride will take our finalists and pros on a rolling 104 km long route along some of Mallorca's pristine roads. Early on they will be doing their race pace drills and also the sprint leadouts. To finish though, gruelling hill climb strength efforts and one final sting in the tail. There's more Aussies than anything else. Yeah. Ryan, you do what you love doing. Of course. Man, like, that's all you can do at the end of the day. Yeah. So Zwift Academy for me was a form of escape. My mum was diagnosed with ALS at the start of last year, which is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, a form of motor neuron disease. And so my mum's diseased state progressed. Uh, she passed away in July of this year. I just felt empty. And it was a blessing that Zwift Academy for 2021 came about in August. And it was a way for me to escape what was happening to me in my life again. I was able to focus on holding the watts and doing something that wasn't, that wasn't thinking about what was happening to me. It was a blessing and I, I put everything into those sessions and I have never pushed myself so hard in those sessions. It was just the ultimate self-esteem boost, confidence boost that I needed in a time where I felt really low. And then to be told that I was a finalist and that I was going to Mallorca and that this is all happening is just... It felt like my world had flipped on itself, but for once it had flipped in a positive way. And so to have this just feels like, like I've won already. So, yeah. I'm really excited, man. Yeah, it's good. I haven't fun. done too many lead outs, but it's pretty exciting. Like, it'll be cool. Yeah, me either. The only lead out I've done is with, I was a one man lead out for my sprinter. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like from a small town up in Queensland. It's about a thousand k's north of like the Sunshine Coast, Brisbane area. Yeah, my family's been heaps supportive over the years. You know, with mountain biking, they drove me around the country basically to do the National Junior Series and Dad rides himself and and Mum, <laughs> Mum's like, you know, I've started, I was doing the Zwift racing and what she really likes about that, she can just be there with me and she's like gotten so into it. She got to, it's like so enthusiastic, it's really cool. She's like, go Alex, they're attacking, you have to follow. I'm like, yeah, I know. Keep going. Through your whole journey, you have lots of people help you just for free. And to like, be able to win this contract and, and pay them back, especially my family, like, um, you know, they've given up so much, they've sacrificed so much for me, and they've just completely believed in me, um, which is absolutely amazing. Like, I can't ask any more than that, I mean. This is a life dream, you know. I've been cycling since I was nine. Since then, I almost every year competed at the Dutch Championship. From all the championships, I've never been off podium. And uh, one, one time in all the other years, I became second. I have a habit of becoming second, so I hope I can change that this week. When I won the Dutch Championship on Swift, uh, it was against older women. I was only 14 years old. 
I look up to uh, Kasia Niwidoma and, well, the rest of the team. I mean, they are all amazing. Uh, also, Neve Bradbury, who, who uh, took the win last year. She's amazing. Winning uh, would mean the world to me. I would get to my dream when I'm only 18 years old. Uh, well, I, I can't wrap my head around it. It's just amazing. I mean, I would be a pro cyclist at least for a whole year. Uh, well, I don't know. It's just amazing. I don't know. It's just amazing. With the riders approaching the 50k mark, it can only mean one thing. It's sprint lead out time. First up, the male finalists take on the mighty Alperson Fenix train. Okay, so what's up next? We are going to do a lead out of two k's, the Zwift Academy guys against the Alperson Fenix guys. And I'm looking forward to see how it's going to take the win. The course is a flat stretch of road where the teams will ride head to head in two single lines. It's a drag race. Each rider sets the pace in turn and then peels off when they reach their limit. The only aim is to deliver their most explosive rider to the finish for an all-out sprint for the line. To stand any chance against the pros, our finalists will need to work out their most effective lineup for the leadout. More explosive riders at the end for when the speed is at its peak and they're riding against Mathieu van der Poel and Tim Merlier. No pressure then, guys. Look, you worked it out, yeah, he's doing what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my sprint's not very good. No. I think I would be happy to start it off. Okay. Slowly bolt it up. That's fine with you guys. How about you, Alex? And then, what do you think, like, then Sam, then you after that? Um, yeah, I'll go second. So you go first, I'll go second. You said Mads for Kubi Fee. One, two, three, four, five. So Cooper is doing the sprint then? He is, yeah. Out of the blocks, the finalists have inexplicably changed their lineup, with Byron not starting out as planned and putting the big engine Sam on the front first instead. This is Byron on the front now, isn't it? Oh, they've lost, lost quite a bit of ground there, haven't they? There is no lead out left from the Swift guys. Byron is gone. Three guys. Three against three. Oh, he's and down. Our, our Australian guy. And it's now up to Alex. This could be make or break. Going up against Matthew Vanderpool. <laughs> Which is fair, Alex versus Matthew Vanderpool. This is stronger from Alex, yeah. we have to be honest. The Danish Express Mads can't contain his racecraft and is instinctively dive for Melier's wheel. The rules are broken, but the dream is still alive. That was a big pull from Mads and Cooper is now perfectly placed to out sprint a Tour de France stage winner. Or maybe not. A win then for Alperson Fenix, but the finalists impressively push Merlier all the way to the line. A celebratory wheelie from Matthew van der Poel across the finish line. Yeah! Next up, it's the women's lead out, which differs from the men's. Initially, each rider will take 20 second turns on the front at a high tempo. Then, as they come into the final kilometre, Lars of Canyon Sram will lead the riders out, getting them up to a speed of 45 kilometres per hour before setting the finalists off in an all out head to head sprint to the line. Seriously fast right now. Yeah, we're definitely seeing what they can do at high speed. Yeah. <laughs> 
couple of kilometers in and there are already some gaps opening up between the riders. The pace is high and it's about to get even faster as Lars moves to the front for the lead out towards the finish line. Caitlin has found herself on the wheel of Lars with Imogen following, Maud is in the middle, Rachel in fourth place and Willemine at the back of the quintet. The first to make a move is Imogen, passing Caitlin who is visibly already on her limit. It's a long way to the line though and it's Maud who bridges up to Imogen, bringing the others with her. Hiding well and timing her sprint perfectly though is Willemine who takes the win on the line. With the lead outs done and dusted, we head north towards the mountains. Whilst the finalists are en route, there will be a surprise at the end of today's ride. A max hill effort on this tortuous climb up to Betlem. Right, so I'm at the bottom of the climb that the riders are unknowingly about to face. And, uh, well, frankly, I'm gonna show you all how it should be done <laughs> by using Matthew Vanderpool to demonstrate. <laughs> uh, now, Matthew, okay, this, this is gonna be a big effort for the riders, a short one, but going absolutely at their maximum. How important is that kind of effort in a race? I think nowadays, especially in classic races, it's one of the most important efforts if you want to make it in a front group, but for sure, um, yeah, if you see all the classic races, uh, Ardennes are a bit longer, maybe the efforts, but the uh, Flemish classic races are all about the one to three minutes effort. So um, you have to deliver it a few times to be in front of the race. To win Amstel Gold probably takes about 1,200 for a minute, right? <laughs> 1,000 is, is really a lot for a minute, so um, especially at the end of a race. Um, so I think it was, it was closer to the 800, I told you. <laughs> and on that note, it's time for Matthew Vanderpool to show us what awaits our finalists. They will be required to give an all-out max effort up the Col de Pescadores, a 1.5 kilometer long climb with an average gradient of 6.7%. And after a hard training ride, an impressive effort up this climb will give team bosses a solid indication of just what these riders are capable of when they're fatigued. Finalists, you have shown the coaches your skills in what's looked to be a really tough road session. Looked really tough from back in the car, I'll be completely honest. But the judges want to see more. So before you roll back to the hotel, you're going to finish today's ride with one final hill rep designed to see how you can perform even in a fatigued state. In short, in a race situation, you're going to be off the front or out the back. Christoph, what's in store? Yes, after uh, about three hours of uh, bike riding now, we just want to see a bit uh, how much power you still have left in the tank. Uh, we will let you off over here, up to the climb, 10 seconds in between each rider. Preferred gear, seated standing, it's all up to you guys. Last one to the top. And then easy to the hotel, ready to relax. Cool. That's all right, it, guys, yeah. good luck. Go for it, let's get set up. Right, go, Sam. Sam is out the blocks first, right, right, setting right. what looks to be a ferocious pace. Can he show the coaches that he's capable of a higher cadence than in the fitness test? With the explosive Cooper hot on his tail, he needs to show the coaches that unlike his fitness test, he can ride these three minute efforts without overcooking it. And now to Mads, who after an impressive start, is making ground up already on Cooper. In hot pursuit, it's the punchy Aussie Alex, but will his efforts of clinging on to Matthew Vanderpool in the lead out damage his chances in the hill climb? And he'll be sensing danger because flyweight climber Byron is chasing him down. The day Mads has Cooper in his sights, but after an explosive start, can he maintain his pace?
that you were the one rider that didn't have any carrot in front of him because you started first. Disadvantage to you, do you think? Yeah, I think I think it was a bit of a disadvantage, especially mentally, because with the switchbacks, I could look look down the hill and see everyone coming up at me, and I'm like, it, uh, maybe that's not 10 seconds. I think they might be catching me, and it's a bit of a mind game. But you know, at the end of the day, you just have to go as fast as you can, and that's what I did. After three and a half hours doing a max effort, it's like what we're going to do in races. So good to get that done. It was pretty cool, like going a full gas effort and having like to take the corners and stuff, and like. Yeah, you get into a really good flow. The men's hill climb results are as follows. In first place, Sam, three minutes and 16 seconds. In second, it's Mats with three minutes and 19 seconds. Cooper is in third, three minutes and 24 seconds. Fourth is Byron with three minutes 28. And fifth is Alex on the same time. And now it's time for the women. Finalists, here we go then. You have shown the judges your skills today. That's been a long, hard training ride. You've got one final effort to do then before you can roll back to the hotel. I'll lead you in that we get a progressive uh, race done here. So I ride like a minute, set a good tempo as before, and then you can put the hammer down. Okay, so this is like the finale of a race then. You've got a whole load of work in the legs. And this is going to be what ultimately separates you to become a professional cyclist. In a cruel plot twist, performance director Lars has decided to remove the battery from the rider's gearing, forcing them to ride the hill climb in a fixed gear. Brutal. Lars once again sets the initial pace, gradually ramping things up before setting them off to race to the top of the climb. After he swings off, it's Maud who hits the front, setting her own strong tempo, which is enough to see Willemine already beginning to struggle at the back of the group. The accumulated fatigue from a long day in the saddle is really beginning to take its toll. Soon after, it's Caitlin who decides to pile the pressure on, clearly wanting to try and hurt the others sooner rather than later. And it's a tactic that works. Imogen is the next to lose contact, with Rachel distant soon after, and Willemine unable to claw herself back into contention. At the front, Caitlin is on a mission. She's opened up a slender but significant gap to Maud, and the 18-year-old will have her work cut out to remain in contention. With the Canyon SRAM pros Elise and Neve watching closely as the finalists near the top of the climb, Maud somehow finds the power to not only bridge to Caitlin, but also to go straight past her. At this point, everyone is at their limit. It's all about who's got the most left in their legs and making sure they get everything out of themselves before the finish line. Crossing that line first is Maud, an impressive performance from the youngster with a time of four minutes and four seconds. Caitlin stops the clock four seconds later to take second on the challenge. Rachel is third with four minutes 25. Imogen a further nine seconds adrift in fourth and then Willemine in fifth in a time of four minutes and 42 seconds. It was really, it was really hard. Yeah, I gave everything. I, uh, yeah, I'm happy, of course. Uh, I'm really happy that I was uh, able to push after a hard training. It's better being warmer now than being cold because it's just gonna be easy in the group. And... Despite impressing coaches during the sprint effort, Willemine was visibly disappointed at coming in fifth overall on the hill climb. Willemine, great effort there, well done. Thank you. <laughs> totally <laughs> devastated. <laughs> Yeah, I probably went a little bit too much in the beginning. I didn't, you know, kind of play it cool. So about 200 meters, 300 meters before the end, Maud came around me and I had nothing left. Elise was like, stand up, stand up. I stood up and I sat right back down because I couldn't, I had nothing left. I was with you for quite a while and Caitlin was ahead yeah. and then you like jumped and I was like oh my god. The lead out already was hard. I, yeah. The finalists will now head back to the beach house and submit their data whilst we have a catch up with the team judges. 
Uh, welcome back. End of day two. So you've been able to see their skills out on the open road today. Uh, we have got an order, but no particular one. But we're going to start anyway with Caitlin. Uh, yesterday in the opening test, she performed really well on the short effort. I think we we're expecting stronger performances on the longer one. But again today on the shorter effort, Lars, uh, she was very good. Yeah, we we did a long echelon work to to see how they work on on speed and. and she was pretty good in that one, and then on the sprint, uh, she showed that uh, she can ride short and intensive. And on to Rachel, uh, we noted in the car that on that first pace line, Beth, that she a couple of times did struggle to get back onto the side of the chain that was moving forward. Yeah, we saw that with Rachel also when they were doing the lead out. I think um, her efforts at the front also weren't as uh, long or as strong as some of the other riders. And just getting back in, I think that's whether it's just a technique or she hasn't practiced it that much, not really, not really sure. But you could see that, um, yeah, that was a bit of a challenge or more of a challenge for Rachel than some of the other finalists. Next up, we're going to have Willemine. Just to remind everyone, our 18-year-old or one of them that's here. Uh, how did she get on the sprint? Because that's her strong point, Lars. Well, she she was first there. She she won that, and I think she had even reserved to to go harder. Um, yeah, definitely that that is her strength. Um, she was really good on the fast part, and then she struggled a little bit on the the last uh, effort. Our well, next up, uh, Maud, who of course did so well in the opening day test. Very different situation with such a long ride today. 18 years of age, but still incredible on that final climb and the final test. Yeah, very strong. Um, I mean, she showed no problems on, on the the first efforts, and uh, in the sprint, she was probably not the fastest. Yeah, but she was there doing doing her sprint, and um, she did really well on the the strength efforts. Yeah, you definitely see that she's really quite calm and collected. Okay, uh, finally then, we'll move on to Imogen. First impressions when you're riding with her, Lars? Yeah, good. She was uh, very motivated today. Surprisingly good on the fast part. So I'm not expecting her to be like, not like the Dutch riders, uh, to be naturally uh, riding in such wind conditions. Just then by the fatigue, uh, like halfway, I would say like, died on the on the final. I thought she might have been closer just because uh, she did really well in the three minutes in the testing. But in the end, not really to go one way or other. Um, she actually, she just rode consistent the whole day, really. Well, that's each of them as individuals. Uh, what are you noticing from sort of group collective, both on the bike today, but also uh, off the bike so far? Definitely as a group, like they're really close together. I mean, it's only day two, but they're actually looking out for each other. They're communicating well on the group when they're doing the pace line effort. And finally, Lars, without giving too much away, as these first two days help make your decision any clearer yet or not? No. No. It's, <laughs> no not really. It's, di it's difficult, yeah. Uh, well, thanks for joining us again. We will see you again tomorrow, of course, but I also need to see you later uh, once you've decided who your rider of the day is going to be for day two. After expert insight from Canyon SRAM, it's now time to get the lowdown from the Alps and Phoenix judges. Right, guys. Firstly, thanks very much for having me in the team car. That was great. We saw an awful lot, didn't we, from uh, from our vantage point. Let's start with the uh, with the pace line, shall we? First of all, now it looked it looked pretty fast. It looked pretty cohesive. Was there anything that jumped out at you? Uh, anyone that was doing it well and or doing it badly? I think it all went well, and the the route was quite technical at that moment. The wind was in the back, so it went quite quite fast. A bit negative, maybe was uh, Sam in the turns and everything. Okay, and then the lead outs, which was good. I thought, um, it doesn't matter what I think. What did you think? Uh, Christophe, I'll start with you. Yeah, lead outs are always an exciting kind of uh, drill. Um, we do that quite often on training camp too with the guys. For the Zwift Academy guys, I suppose it was the first time that they had in team really such a, a short effort where they had to work together. Um, and I think in general that we can say that they, they managed it uh, pretty well. I remember Alex with a very strong uh, effort to keep up a bit with the pace of Mathieu. Um, also the sprint of Cooper was, uh, was very decent. Um, and the others also just 
yeah, they managed it well. Okay, now let's move on then to the final test, which was the, uh, the max effort after all of that hard work. Now, we've got preliminary results, haven't we? We should stress that, uh, that these are from Dan Lloyd's stopwatch and therefore there's quite a large margin of error. But very well, should we start with fifth place first, actually? So fifth place was Alex, which was a real surprise, I think, to me, to you as well. Uh, yeah, for me as well, because as I said, we, we made an order that we thought, uh, okay, the, the fastest guys start the last and they are going to catch up a bit. He lost about yeah, 12 seconds, um, which is quite a lot on a maximal effort of yeah, a good three minutes. Okay, then in fourth place, this is another surprise, wasn't it? Byron, we think, is the 60 kilo guy. He'd go up that climb like a rocket, but... Um, it appears not. Yeah, from Bayern we expected that he is, yeah, the best climber of, of the of the five final, finalists when it goes about pure climbing. Maybe the effort was a bit too short to show as a real climber what his capabilities are. Okay, in second place we've got Mads. Now he had a slight issue in that um, he was going so fast he had to brake uh, for the motorbike, but still. Mid pack for Mads. That's that's a good ride, and he was looking smooth out there today, wasn't he? Yeah, that's correct. Today uh, outside, I think he managed uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. In third place, then we had Cooper. Now, as the designated team sprinter, second place in a in a 3k hill climb challenge. That seems like a good ride to me. He did very well, indeed. He was not sprinted out by Merlier. And, and on the hill, he was also good. Yeah, so, so that you already had him in quite a high regard and today mm -hmm. makes you think, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, and then lastly then, a surprise winner, I think perhaps. We've got Sam, our, our biggest rider. Yeah, the diesel does it again. Yeah. After three and a half hours of riding, so then it makes sense. It seems like he always has the same kind of diesel power in it. Not that real punch, but the diesel keeps going. Is a, is a diesel suitable for professional racing? How big has your engine got to be to get away with it, Christophe? You need a big engine, but you need also, mm. as well, a lot of other things. And maybe... But like today, he surprised again. His cadence on the hill was good is a, a lot higher than it was on the flat. Yeah. So, <laughs> all of a sudden, he can do it. Now, it seems like your job today, picking the ride of the day, might be a little bit harder, given that there's no clear hierarchy emerged from that. But uh, have you got someone in mind? Uh, still, I think we still need to think a bit about it. Okay, right, well, I'll leave you guys to discuss. After feedback and analysis from our pro team judges, it's time to pay the finalists a visit. Hello again, finalists. Feels like we're starting to settle in a bit now, doesn't it? Uh, si and I have been discussing today. We had a great and a very warm time oh, in amazing. the team cars behind you all. Uh, but in all seriousness, we had a good time for your first long ride on the Mallorcan roads. Yeah, so obviously the coaches, as you said this morning, were going to be scrutinising your technique first and foremost. And I've got to say, the feedback from them was brilliant. They thought you all did a fantastic job. So very well done indeed. Those strength intervals at the end looked super tough and then going into that final effort as well has given them a little bit more of an idea as to how you're performing. And so of course we have asked them to nominate their riders of the day. And they did say it was a really, really, really tough one. It was. Uh, I'll start uh, with the women finalists because that's who I was following again today. Today's rider of the day is... Caitlin. Well done to you, Caitlin. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first of which is that they did have some reservations about what your bike handling might be because you come to the sport slightly later. They were super impressed with how comfortable you were in a bunch and with the pros, etc. Uh, Lars was with you as well, so of course he was seeing it firsthand. The other reason was how you attacked that final climb. You gave everything from the start, so even though uh, Mort overtook you towards the end, they were impressed that you gave it your all and played your cards. Right then, guys. 
Over to you then. So uh, ride of the day, as I said, was a super tough one. You had uh, a time trial at the end there, of which Sam, you were the winner. But on the basis of the other drills today, they've actually gone for Cooper again. Congratulations. So I think the lead out was fantastic from all of you. They did say that you should have been on the right hand side of the road, not the left, and you needed to get there first. But your sprint against one of the best sprinters in the world, they said, was, was a cracking effort. And then to back that up with a really solid ride on a 3K hill climb as well, made them really sit up and take notice. So well done, Cooper. Well done. Right. OK, guys. <laughs> fantastic day. We will see you again tomorrow. Uh, super stoked to get rider of the day today. It's a bit of a shock, but I'm um, super yeah. happy. That's really exciting. Just made sure that I really attacked everything that I did and just try to implement all my skills to show the coaches and obviously it worked today. So that brings us to the end of day two here at the Zwift Academy Finals. I've got to say, Dan, I was quite surprised at the Alberson Fenix rider of the day. Not that Cooper didn't deserve it, but it was such a close run thing. And given that Sam won that final test, I don't know, I mean, it feels like they're prioritizing that kind of punchy rider. And at the moment, I guess Cooper is top of the pile. Yeah, a very specific type of rider, maybe. Contrary to that, I haven't really been able to glean anything from the Canyon <laughs> SRAM judges. So it was Maud yesterday who was rider of the day, today it was Caitlin. But I have got no idea really who they're thinking about for that pro contract for next year. No, I've been able to glean something about one of the Canyon SRAM judges, and that is that Lars is seriously hard stopping the riders from changing gear on their final efforts. Yeah. Oh my word. That did seem quite harsh. Savagery. But it was. not as harsh as what's coming tomorrow because it is the first of the eliminations. And all the finalists will be taking on a very tough race on day three. That's right, a Zwift race. It's gonna to be tough. 150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alpus in Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Come on, come on, eh? What are you waiting for? It's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Coming up on the Zwift Academy Finals, the finalists are tested in a Mallorcan storm. There is a points race battle. Mount's getting odds on the line. Just pulls out a second or two of a gap now. And we have our first eliminations. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. Your Zwift Academy dreams will end here. Welcome back to the Zwift Academy Finals, day three. Over the first two days here in Mallorca, the judges have had a good opportunity to look at the riders, their physiological qualities, and indeed some of their riding skills. Today though, the riders are gonna face another tough test on this island paradise of Mallorca. Now, there will also be an elimination tonight. Some of our riders will be going home early. Morning finalists. Firstly today, you will be going well, for a bike ride, basically. Yes, two hours, steady, just spinning the legs. 
And it is quite important that you don't go too hard on this morning's ride because later on this evening, for the first time, you are going to be competing head to head on a Zwift race. That's right, the gloves come off. Now, it's a points race format, so you're going to be needing to make repeated maximal sprint efforts on the punchy cobble climbs of the Richmond World Championship circuit. Now, the amount of points on offer increases as you go through the race. So if you want to be in it to win it, and I suggest you probably do, you're going to need to be fighting until the bitter end. That's later. Now, you should probably go and get your rain jackets on. That's right, the elephant in the room. Come to Mallorca, they said. It'll be lovely. Not today. And Mallorcan roads are notoriously treacherous when wet, as slippery as a Belgian cobble. But that is something you are likely to have to navigate if you turn pro. That's right, the judges are going to be watching. So, whilst the riders are about ready to head out on their ride, you will notice there are a few absent. Uh, whilst the Canyon Strand women's team seem well up for going out on a training ride in the cold, wet and windy conditions, it appears that Alpers and Phoenix aren't up for it. No. Well, does that, does that mean that Matthew van der Poel's going to be here this morning? He's hanging around the hotel, apparently, instead. I wonder if he fancies practicing cyclocross remounts with me in the hotel car park. I'll, um... You're right, just... You, you go hit with a, and I'll just go and see if you can find him. Okay, all right, see you a bit, mate. There'll be some nerves in the bunch. Mallorcan roads are perfect in the dry. In the wet, they are treacherous and will expose weakness in any rider's bike handling ability. Riding in the rain, especially in the group, it's quite tricky, especially for people who are not used to it, because you just need to stay concentrated. You need to be focused on what's happening around you non-stop, like, you need to think about others and not necessarily about yourself. Yeah, you just need to observe all the time, be alert and know what's happening around you. Despite it being billed as an easy ride from the judges, concentration is going to be key. Do you train with somebody back at home or usually on your own? Um, I train a lot with my friends. Um, with my dad sometimes, cars! My sister also rides sometimes with her. I get really, I get a lot of support from my family. Like, yeah, they're really proud and they just, uh, yeah, they always support me, like going for training or uh, doing a race. My dad was a professional triathlete when he was younger. He just makes my trainings and I'm doing the trainings. And sometimes afterwards we just talk a bit. My family also wants for me to have a lot of fun, like to enjoy life and just to do the things that I love the most. I'm pretty warm, actually. <laughs> I'm toasty, mate. Got some of layers on. Yeah. The finalists survive the dicey roads, and despite the horrific conditions, morale seems good. For some, perhaps it's the novelty factor. Yeah, first time, kind of like cycling and um, weather that kind of cold and wet. It was pretty, pretty interesting. It's still pretty good out there. Like us boys, just like you know, got a bit of chit chat going. The sun came out for about five minutes, teased us a little bit. But now it was time to dry off and get the feet up. The clock is ticking to tonight's critically important Zwift race. The riders will be facing a total of 27.9 kilometers in their race tonight. Uh, that is made up of three laps of the short Richmond circuit. Yes, so basically the flat bit has been removed, leaving two short, sharp, cobbled climbs and then a long and painful drag to the line. Now, in my opinion, this is one of Zwift's very best racing courses, modelled faithfully on the World Championships course from a few years ago. But this is e-racing, of course, and so there are differences, particularly power-ups, which are, in this case, feather, aero or draft. And they're awarded at random to the riders at key points during the race they effectively turbocharge their own attributes and they can deploy them with this button. It's time for the Zwift points race on the Richmond Cobbled Climb course. Three laps, points available for three riders each, three, two and one as they come across the line on Libby Hill and 23rd Street and then six, three and two for riders at the finish line. Still on the flats here on this opening lap. The first power-ups have been collected at the start arch. Riders are about to hit the first climb up Libby Hill. 
Right, the riders have just hit the bottom of the first KOM. It ramps up quite gently. We're only on about 4%. And then we're going to swing a hard right onto the really steep cobbled sector. Willemine is the first to make the push at 7.7 .7 watts a kilo, stretching the group out here. Well, that's an aero power up from Rachel. She's given her power more effect. She's made herself a little more aero in game. She can conserve some energy here and she'll be in a strong position for the base of the cobbles, you'd think. Right, here we go up Libby Hill. That's Caitlin using the feather there, dropping her weight, should allow her to go past Rachel. Remember, three, two and one points available at the top now. What's being powered out, as you can see? Just look at the faces there. It's Caitlin who's at the front in that lighter yellow colored jersey. Just coming around her now in the green is Maud. You can just see she's taken the lead. 7.4 watts per kilo. Some real efforts being put in here and it's going to be three points for Maud and that looks fairly easy, doesn't it? Maud, Caitlin and Rachel. Interesting that Imogen isn't present here. It has already, already blown to bits. So Imogen, as you can hear from Beth, has already gone out the back. Not quite sure what's happened. That's a real surprise because she was looking super strong on previous days. Maud, perhaps unsurprisingly, based on her power numbers on day one, has taken that first gram easily. And she's still out front. Whether or not she eases up and waits, Caitlin was second over the top. Rachel, you can see, just sitting in behind me. But we've got our selection made. Here we go, ready, QOM number two. Well, these climbs come back to back thick and fast, straight after each other, and Mild yet again is out there at the front. Caitlin there in the yellow jersey, looking to pick up two points again. The maximum points are gonna go to Mild, no doubt about that. She's almost five seconds in front of Rachel. It's gonna be second and two points for Rachel. Caitlin there, Willemine is drifting off the back two now. In terms of Imogen, we're hearing that she's suffering from a mechanical. That's why she's lost touch with the group. Just, just stay it's worth reminding you all that in Zwift gameplay, working together on the road is just like working together on the road in real life as well. Get wheel of mind, get together. Get together, recover, work together. Right is approaching Governor Street. Coming up to the finish line again now. You can see that Caitlin is struggling. Try to close the gap as she really fights with the pedals, with the power, with the gradient as well. And it's Maud coming up to the finish line. She'll take her own power up. There's Rachel as well. Rachel in second position in that grey jersey. Caitlin at that really nasty middle of the road point there at around 10 seconds all on her own. It's going to be a really hard job with Maud and Rachel still at the front. But look at this from Mauda showing her own explosive attributes now. Second time up Libby Hill now. On the 23rd Street here. And Mauda is going to come to the top yet again and take maximum points. Rachel's been with her. But Mauda might well have just put her behind. So yet again, maximum points for Maud. Rachel, six seconds now, just gaining. Maybe an opportunity to get back on. Well, that's a good recovery. They're back together at the front. Now, oh, Maud, has she enough left? Or has she sat up intentionally somehow here? Interesting to see how things happen. So that group behind at just under 30 seconds. Well, into this final lap now, five kilometers from the finish line. Two more climbs to go. For the two leaders, Rachel and Maud, there's only just under five kilometers remaining now. So with these KOM points, we've seen Maud taking them, but then dropping back so that she's with Rachel to share the workload. Might come a point where she decides to make an attack for the points and keep going. And so to the final time up Libby Hill. So Rachel hits the button, uses her power up, 
But what has she got? Well, looks like it's a feather. Good timing from Rachel, who's trying to get herself in the game. And here she goes, she's past Mild. So Mild now drops her feather. Can she get back to her before the line? Pedaling away for dear life on the bike now, but here comes Mild again. Around that final corner, here comes Mild. Green jersey, they're coming to the line and Mild's gaining. Mild's gaining, oh, it's on the line. It looks as though as it's Mild who's taken the points. She continues to dominate. Right, is on 23rd Street here. We know that there's been one dominant racer in Mild. And Mild rides away from her rivals once more. Rachel's giving everything though. It's not enough to stay with Mild. Look at the difference in the demeanors on the bike in the room here. All eyes transfixed on the athletes. And in the virtual world, it's Mild who pedals away yet again. Another three points for Mild Alderman. Mild is racing really clever here. Letting Rachel catch her, sitting in a draft for a while, and then rolling her for the points. She really has a racing brain much beyond her 18 years. Just look at the effort here. Look at the effort. Mild is approaching the very, very final pedal strokes of what has been painful but glorious stuff for her so far. She's pulled off a monster ride here for a monster gap. Mild going all the way to the line. Mal taking the victory. That is a very, very special ride, appreciated by some VIPs in the audience. Oh, will have made the last to finish. After some explosive Zwift racing, here are the official results of the women's points race. First is Maud with 23 points, second is Rachel on 16, Caitlin's in third on 6 points, Imogen picked up 3 to take 4th and Willemeyer is in 5th place having failed to pick up any points. I was just really happy that I could execute my plan. All in all pretty happy, things happen and I, you know, I think I made the, the best of what happened, that's racing, that's life, you can't predict what's going to happen, you just have to adapt. It's now time for the men's points race. I predict this one might get a little bit punchy. Another three laps then on the roads of the Richmond UCI World Championship course. So Sam's gone for it. Well, coaches describe him as a diesel. The question is, can diesel power win a race like this? The rest in a group of four working together. Interestingly, Sam has decided to go for it early and is currently enjoying a two-second advantage over the rest of them. Yeah, just a casual 500 watts uh, for Sam. This is the, the trouble is, though, like, it'd be easy to get dropped at this stage. And if you've then got to start closing gaps mm. for 500 watts, like, yeah, that's... And does this show us that Sam's not confident in his sprinting ability up the climbs? Or is it just the fact that he knows he's got a big engine, particularly on the flats, because he's a slightly bigger rider, and actually he's just pressing home his advantage, trying to soften up his rival? Just two and a half kilometres in, and it's the 25-year-old part-time teacher from Tamworth, New South Wales in Australia, who's ahead. Now we're getting a bit of a reaction. But we thought we'd get the thoughts of someone that's a potential future teammate for these five riders. Uh, Matthew, what have you made of the start? Because Sam's absolutely going for it right from the very beginning. Risky tactic, would you say? Maybe, but I think for him it's the smartest tactic. Nobody wants to chase him, I think, and blow up already. So it's interesting, and if he can hold on this pace, uh, maybe he can uh, ride solo until the finish line. Yeah, oh, it's been really interesting already at the start of this race. What else are you looking for in the rise of the, the rest of this race? Do you think it's possible that they're going to come back to him? Or, I mean, it's a long way to go. It's a really long way to go, and maybe someone can bridge the gap on, the, on one of the climbs. Well, it's up to 12 seconds, so you're doing a great job. We'll see if he can hold it. Right, here we go up Libby Hill. 
won yesterday's day two hill climb. Knows all about how to win this thing. Of course, he's big mates with Jay Vine, the former winner. These lighter, punchier riders behind need to use every one of these hills to close that gap to Sam. Okay, we're on the first climb now, and tactically, this is absolutely fascinating. So Sam has gone early. He's managed to get that gap. The guys behind stopped chasing. No one wanted to take it up. So he has a pretty big gap, but he obviously can't lift his pace for this steep climb. He's kind of stuck at six, six and a half watts per kilo. Stuck. Whereas the other lads are closer to pushing 10 watts per kilo. So his 20 second gap is now down to, what, 13 seconds. On the 23rd street here, gap's come down considerably now, hasn't it? Sam's still out there, he led by 25 seconds almost at the start of the first climb. Has then reduced by around 10 seconds, and look at this, just six and a half seconds to Alex now. Matt's in third place as well. There's Alex, he's got the leader in sight. Looks as though the points will go to Sam again, however. So that's six points already to Sam in this race. Alex second, and that's the third place in the end for Cooper. What's Sam got to keep going? It looks as though his adventure might be over for now. They're almost on the wheel here. But he has that lead. Five riders more or less still there. They're just firing a mass with that little gap to close. And here goes Alex. Riders taking on the Governor Street climb now. We saw on our televisions a few years back. The left turn and then the ever so slight false flat uphill to the line as well. And Alex is pulling out a three second gap here. He's yet to really show us a standout performance yet Alex, but he's been solid all week so far. Bit of a change at the front as Sam retakes his position. Chance to maybe try and pull out on the downhill, but that's difficult, isn't it? Alex giving the same effort. All five riders about as together as they can be with 17 kilometers to go, just under two laps. Climbs are coming up again now. Sam is trying to make his move once more. Just pulls out a second or two of a gap now. Surely they're not going to let him go this time. A little bit of a calm before the storm on a second lap now. Although with Sam currently rampaging, I don't think uh, he will make it the tactic wise. Won't be the smartest move. The smartest move says the boss. But look at this gap. Look at this gap. It's over half a minute now for Sam. If they let him do this every lap, he will walk away with victory. Remember, this is a points race. But Sam started this climb, pulling out a gap of over 30 seconds. He has that 30 second gap. Huge effort up that first hill. and Cooper drops his power up at just the right time. Ah, he loses contact. Mass is being dropped. That is it. Mass dropped quite spectacularly so. The Sam started this climb, pulling out a gap of over 30 seconds. The four in the chase now. now this race taking shape. Three in the chase, led by Alex. Cooper and Byron in his draft. Now, if they work together as they would on the road, they could use the draft in Swift to help bring Sam back. It's just so hard to stay away solo if a group behind you works well together. Question is, will they? Got 
quite some gap now, hasn't he? 51 seconds. I'll be honest, I didn't think he was going to be able to do that after he got caught on the first lap. Are you surprised as well? Yeah, for sure. I'm surprised. Uh, I thought it'd be the same. Uh, I thought it was a good start, uh, taking the first two sprints, and then I thought, OK, now he is just going to sit back and wait for the final. But he just kept uh, keeping going on. And I think the other guys, the punchy guys, just are a bit afraid of each other. Yeah. And now the big engine is gone, I'm afraid. Well, they're getting deeper into this race now. The faces start to turn to more effort, more pain. Just 3.3 kilometers to go for the leader. In the meantime, they're trying to mop up the two and one points behind. Three riders going for it. By them there in the uh, orange and blue jersey. to hold on for those two points is Byron and it will be Cooper to take the one bit of a mistake there from Alex Sam still with just under a minute of a lead this has been quite a remarkable performance Byron dropping the aero power up there not the best place to use it but it will help a little he can pick up a new one going through the arch Cooper had a feather he used that at the right time again this man is a racer Taking advantage of that reputation as the lightweight to outclimb the rest. But look at this though, because here comes Cooper. They go neck and neck to the line. Look at this, look at this. Oh, wow, he's round him. Two points for Cooper. It looked as though Byron was going to ride away to those easily. And Sam has put in a monster performance. He has a monster engine. The part-time teacher all the way from Australia has come to Mallorca and given out a lesson. That monster engine on show, the part-time teacher from Australia has given them a lesson. Byron coming across in second place, Alex in third on the line. Sam first across the line, having picked up the points, dominated the race. Sam is today's winner. It's been attritional. It's been absolutely hardcore out there in the virtual world. They are all absolutely shattered. It felt really good to come out on top today. There's a massive audience watching and everyone's yelling, sparing me on. The heart rate was high, the pain was high, but yeah, super excited to get out on top. It was a great atmosphere tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure, I didn't impress anyone today, but I, will, I think, I hope I will the next couple of days, but just have to shake this off and move on. With the men's points race wrapped up, here are the official results. In first, it's Sam with 24 points. In second, it's Byron on 10 points. Third, it's Cooper with nine. Fourth, Alex with five. And in fifth, Mads with zero. After some thrilling racing, it's time to hear the all important thoughts of our pro team judges who are in charge of who stays and who goes in this evening's first surprise eliminations. Okay guys, that was some race that we've just watched. I wasn't expecting that result. Christoph the boss, I'll come to you first. Were you expecting that one? No, not at all. I uh, never thought that uh, he could keep up till the end. To get caught, and then to go again and do exactly the same thing until you break your opponents. That is quite impressive, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a very, very impressive effort. And just like Christoph said, on the moment itself, he never thought that he would keep that up for 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay, before we get too far into, into Sam, let's let's talk about well, let's talk about fifth place first. Mads, what can you what can you take from that? Today we have to be honest, and then uh, he, he cracked a bit uh, into the race then it was fighting until the end. Yeah, okay, and then in fourth place we had Alex. But you saw, you said he, uh, he was having problems with power-ups. Yeah, obviously the button was not working, so uh, he could not use it on the right moment. So that would have been not an advantage for him, I think. No, fourth place <laughs> with no power-ups, that's quite significant. Um, okay, and then onto our podium. So in third place uh, we had the, uh, the rider of the day from day one, it was Cooper. Um, yeah, he confirmed a bit what we thought already, he is probably, let's say, the fastest guy, uh, the most yeah, sprinter guy, most punchy guy of all. Even though the, the differences between Byron, Cooper and Alex, it's 
really small. Really? Yeah. That close? Yeah, that close. So wow. it makes it even more difficult for us, I guess. Okay, so on to Byron then. Now he is the lightest of our riders. Although it took a, took a bit, um, I think the guys know that Cooper is, let's say, the fastest. They felt that already a bit. The last climb they did, yeah, let's say a one minute, one and a half minute full effort to beat the sprinter. And that was the right tactic and that was a very good uh, final uh, sprint from uh, Byron. Yeah, and then on to Sam, because you said you wanted to see, uh, you wanted to be surprised, you wanted to see tactics. It was a TT, he did. It was a points race, so we expected to see some variations in the effort. He just said, no points race for me, my uh, strength is TT, which is brave. Yeah. But does it tell us more now from his capacities? Have you seen enough yet to be able to establish that all-important top three? Getting more and more difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Getting more and more complex because we are here talking about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 watts a kilo on difference. If we have to make a decision on that, uh, sleepless nights. Great stuff. Thanks, guys. After expert insight from the Alpecin Fenix judges, it's time to hear from our Canyon SRAM judges. Uh, so first up then, Willemaine. Obviously she was disappointed at the finish of the race today. How did you see her performance? So I think what was good uh, is that she really never gave up right until the end. And given what you've seen of her so far, do you expect her to be able to put that behind her? And From like seeing Willemine out on the road this morning, actually she really, she impressed there. Right, well let's move on to the fourth place rider that was Imogen. Yeah, she stayed very positive. Uh, unluckily that technical was a bit too early to see the first split, but uh, yeah, she, she kept her head up. I think it was impressive that she had that issue at the start, but she could adapt to the situation. Right then, uh, third place today in the points race was Caitlin. What did you make of her performance? She was fighting hard for an all or nothing there um, to get back on. And then once the rope snapped, I would say, then, then she waited for the other two. That was her only chance. And then just focusing on that third place um, and not being alone in the, in the nowhere there in the middle. All uh, right, runner up in the points race then, we had Rachel. Uh, an incredible fighter was, was my opinion at the end of it. I mean, she just never seemed to give up. Yeah, definitely character-wise as well, like really fighting, like absolute fighter. She probably didn't do as well as we might have expected in the first test, but today she really showed that, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of talent there and she's willing to suffer for it. Well, it was a very good day for Mode, who won the race overall in quite dominant fashion, really. She saved enough uh, to, to then be dominant and it was very impressive how she then attacked at the last two climbs. So, three days in now, are you any closer to a decision, would you say? Well, the decision is not easy. They're really coming more together, actually, than, uh, than stretching out in, in terms of how you would rate them. Also got to talk to you about something which happened a little bit later on, because Willemaine upset as I think we can all um, understand why she was feeling a bit upset after her performance and finishing fifth from five. Uh, but Mode then saw her upset and I understand she was then not in a good way herself. What, what was that about? I mean, I think you have to, I think it's understandable and there's so many emotions running like throughout the entire final. So at some point, some people are going to be high, some people are going to be low. Maybe Willemine was thinking, you know, especially in that moment when she was, she came fifth. So I think there's a lot of lot of stresses that each of the finalists are under, and I think you know some emotions coming out. I think we're going to see that you know probably every day actually, especially as we get closer to the final. The judges have made their decisions. It's now time to visit the finalists. Finalists, you might be wondering why we've gathered you here tonight, and it's because we've got some important news. We have. So the judges have spent a long time analysing everything they've seen from you in the challenges so far, and we've asked them to make a decision. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. Your Zwift Academy dreams will end here.
and we will be so sorry to see you go. Rest assured that getting to this point is already an incredible achievement. It is. 150,000 riders entered the Zwift Academy this year, so it's a testament to your talent on the bike that you're here in the first place. It is. But the two riders we will now say goodbye to are... Mads. And Willemine. Sorry, guys. Well done. Sorry. Thanks. Well done. Okay, well. guys. Sorry. Done so yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. That was a. I'm sorry, Thanks. guy. It's alright. But you did yeah. really well. You. you have to uh, keep that yeah. in mind. Yeah. Got yeah. yeah. me. Yeah. For sure, sure, we have yeah. to. We have to make a, a decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That we can only hope that you yeah. enjoyed the days yeah. 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 spending here and that you maybe learned. Yeah. Yeah. It's just been uh, yeah, an amazing experience and I'm, I'm happy I did it. I'm of course disappointed that I didn't do that well during these days. I just think I underperformed and there can be a million reasons, reasons why. Uh, but that's, that's just how it is and I have to accept it. But I won't lie, I'm really disappointed. I'm happy I had this experience even though I, it didn't went as I hoped. <laughs> Good that we had to build that before. Stay positive. And yeah. you know now <laughs> where you can improve the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I'm feeling very sad, but uh, I'm just gonna accept it and. Uh, keep going and uh, I will be back in about a few years, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's all right. Man, got it for you. It's all right. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. Yeah. Mm. Ten riders began the Zwift Academy final week, but now there are only eight remaining in with a chance of taking that contract with Canyon SRAM or Alpes in Phoenix. Tomorrow, though, they face probably their toughest challenge yet. All day with Sai. No. They're going to ride up Sacalobra, a fearsome test, as part of a long mountainous ride where they'll be keeping pace with the pro riders. Mm. And at the end of the day, unfortunately, we will say goodbye to two more competitors. <sighs> so tough. It is it? hard. I need it? to go to the bike. I mean, well, I would. I'm going to go see if Matthew Vanderpool wants to game of table football. I'll catch up with you, all right? 150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alpes in Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Money, money! What are you waiting for? It's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Coming up on the Zwift Academy, there's drama in the mountains. Gloves are off, full gas. You know, this is just mano a mano, it's like a full sand. The finalists reach their limits. Come on, Imogen, come on. And the judges send another rider home. The two riders leaving ahead of the final day are...
Hello and welcome back to the Zwift Academy Finals. It is now day four and we're still recovering from the shock of losing two of our competitors last night in an elimination. Yeah, we all are, aren't we? That was super tough. Uh, today, though, the judges will continue in their search for cycling's next big stars. You see some blokes just turn up with a coffee van. Should we have a yes, break? Yes, very convenient, that, isn't it? I'll have a flat white, please. Yeah. Good morning, finalists. We hope that you've um, recovered from the shock of last night. I'm not entirely sure we have, we? Uh, No, we haven't just yet. Uh, we have provided coffee for you this morning, and you might need a bit of a pick-me-up for today's ride because it involves a lot of elevation gain. In fact, you'll be taking on most of Mallorca's most famous climbs, and including, at the end of it, the most famous of them all, and probably the toughest, Sacalobra. Nine kilometers, an average gradient of 7%. Right, espressos all round? Yes, we need them. So excited to get some big bergs. Yeah. Some climbing. Nine, nine K at 7%. <laughs> Before we can make us do a challenge, we have to keep up with the end of Going down. You have to keep up with him or no contract? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what the riders don't know yet is that although they're riding up Sacalobra, they're also racing it, aren't they? Now, last from Canyon Sram, he's holding his riders back until the last 3K when the gloves come off. Abs and Fenix, meanwhile, are going to set their riders off from the very bottom. Oh, nine yes. kilometres. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they deal with such a tough test, psychologically and also physically, because there's a lot of cumulative fatigue from the last few days, isn't there? There is. Good coffee goes a long way, but it can't hide everything. No. We're just out on a training ride today. I think we've got five hours on the cards. We'll see what the contestants can um, put out on the climb. We are mostly here to just see what they are capable of riding their bike, um, handling, handling skills, and that's also really important to, to be a good pro cyclist. Yeah, today um, we might put in some uh, some surprise attacks just to see how they react. If they react, then uh, would be cool. Yamas is on top three, eh? He was so proud that he could stay next to you yesterday. <laughs> he was really nervous. <laughs> the finalists will be riding 130 kilometers across the Serra de Tramontania mountain range, taking on some of Mallorca's toughest climbs, including Col de Soyer, the mighty Puigmayor, and finishing on the fearsome Sacalobra, where things will get spicy. Right, I've got massive imposter syndrome, but as you can see, I've jumped in with the Alps and Phoenix guys and the male Zwift Academy finalists just to try and get the insight from within the bunch. It'll be a quick bit of insight because they're currently training, well, they're making me do about 360 watts sat on the back. So it's quite a brisk ride, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try and grab some of the contestants See if I can have a word with him. Cooper, how's it going? We uh, climbed the first one, it was about 7k, and then ripped the descent, which was sick. So, getting taught a few lessons here and there, but yeah, it's been a nice start to the ride. Did you manage to keep up with the guys on the descent? Yeah, I was mixing it with the boys, and uh, you know, you sort of block out that filter, but it was all safe, so it was alright. What yeah. do you make about Matthew doing his efforts? Hopefully, in a few years, I'll be able to keep up with him. Hopefully next year I'll be able to keep up with him. I, like I was in the track program for a few years back in Australia in a state sports institute and it just didn't work out how I would have hoped and obviously I got kicked out of the program so I turned my attention to road and I self-funded a trip to Belgium just to put myself in front of some different people and have an opportunity of a lifetime. Ever since then I've just been loving the road and yeah I found the passion for the sport again. I also work at a sunglass shop called Shade Shop. There you go. Try those on, see how they feel. And yeah I've got a wide variety of Oakleys. I like to have like one of everything and just 
some people say you got to look good to go good. It's just one extra thing that you can build confidence from. Yeah, in Australia, we don't have the same opportunities that Europe have or the rest of the world. So the Zwift Academy is an extremely good opportunity to put yourself in front of the right people. I'm super prepared for the final and I do not want to leave any stone unturned. I've come here to win this contract and I'm not going home without it. The primary aim of this training ride is to put a lot of stress on the riders' bodies so that at the end of it, the judges get an idea of what power they can produce in a fatigued state. So we've done a lot of climbing already today, Ronnie, yeah. and the riders still don't know that they've got to race up Sakalobra as opposed to just riding up Sakalobra. That's, I think it's more a mental test than, than a physical mm. test for them, that they have a competition going on on one of the probably most demanding climbs on the island. Yeah. We've come up north to all where the mountains are. So we, I don't know what the first climb was called, but we went into Soler. Now I think we're on Val Major. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a lot of climbing today. Uh, so I, I started riding in about 2017. I was doing some mountain biking and uh, triathlons just for fun. Uh, so in 2018, January, I started getting coached and was kind of, you know, for fun, just looking to get Strava QOMs in Bermuda and to do some of the racing. And I ended up doing pretty well, so I got asked to represent Bermuda for the Caribbean Championships that year. I came second in the road race there, which qualified me for the Pan American Games in 2019. So I started training for that. At the time I was working as a lawyer. And then in Peru in 2019, I came seventh in the time trial and 10th in the road race, which was you know, a bit of a shock for everybody. Uh, but yeah, based on those results, quit my job at the end of 2019. Winning the pro contract for me would really validate everything that I've done up to this point. You know, I think a lot of people when I first quit my job were surprised that I was taking up cycling full time at age 29, 30. Uh, I think it would just make it tangible for people that come from a small island like Bermuda, that there is a pathway to becoming a pro cyclist. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, it's pretty cool to be like in the mountains like these. We don't really have these at home, so um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to the rest of the ride. Um, outside of cycling, I'm a student. Um, I'm doing my master's at the moment in public health. And then I also work just part-time um, doing some swim coaching as well. Yeah, so um, Alex and I are both just down the road from each other. So um, we're on the same bunch ride on Wednesday with um, the ARA team. Um, and that's, so when we were both doing Swift Academy, we were kind of supporting each other and we'd keep in contact with what workouts we were up to and um, we'd chat about it. So it was pretty unreal really when we both got, got into the top five and um, came across to Spain together. It's been pretty cool to do that. Yeah, um, I think winning the contract at the end of the week would be pretty um, big and like pretty unreal, I think, for me. As well as displaying impressive power numbers, the pro team judges will also be looking to see how the finalists tackle the fast and winding mountain descents, another key attribute needed by pro riders. 
and the first signs of cracks appear. It's diesel engine Sam who is dropped by the bunch almost immediately on the descent of Soyer. That's quite a gap, isn't it? Yeah, and once, he's, once he's, you lost it, it... He's it, dropped already yeah. and there's not even a race. Yeah, and now the difficult part is coming because now he's alone. Yeah. Otherwise you can try to find a bit of the, the correct lines uh, from the experienced guys. You can be very, very strong uphill and being in an early break or something in the, in a Grand Tour or whatever, but if you come on top and you lose every time one minute, one and a half, you can't win the stage that way. And whilst the women descend Sacalobra, it's Imogen who seems to be struggling with bike handling on this technical descent. And are you, are you sensing that this is an area Imogen needs to work on? Yeah. Yeah, but you Even see already one. like how, how one rider approaches the, the switchbacks, for instance. If she can handle that in a bunch or not, or if she is if she's skilled or not. Mm. With the male finalists at the bottom of the climb, it was time to deliver some important news. You've got two big climbs in the legs already. This, as you've just seen on the descent, is something else entirely. And Christoph's got a bit of a surprise for you. Well, a surprise. We are at the, the bottom of the climb now, so you know what's coming up. Or you can uh, go for a swim, <laughs> or we race it up again, okay? And really race it up. So four of you, gloves are off, full gas. Winner's the first one to the top. All right. So I just found out that all us boys are going to go head to head on Sacalobra. You know, this is just mano a mano, just like a full send. It's going to be really, really challenging. I think I'm going to have to be uh, very smart and watch the moves and just play to my strengths. The record for Sacalobra currently stands at 24 minutes 54 seconds for the men and 30 minutes 40 seconds for the women. As well as being perhaps the most dramatic climb you'll ever see, it's also plenty tough. At 9.44 kilometers long and 7% gradient, a pure climber should have the edge, but it's not so steep that a more powerful rider is gonna be completely out of the running. Three, two, one. Go. Good luck, boys. Enjoy. Sam has the burden of setting the early tempo, but the pressure is on flyweight Byron, and he knows it. He's launched almost at the very bottom of the climb. <coughs> Sam has steadily picked up his pace, but he's getting no help from Cooper or Alex. All together again all together but for a moment because Byron is off again and this time he looks like he's put Sam in difficulty. I think he wants to avoid attacks by setting his hard pace. Yeah. Something he likes the most. Three kilometers in and it's all back together until Alex launches his first attack. This was the typical example of the punchers against uh, the TT guy. And the TT guy is once again out the back, but cracks are appearing in Cooper too. There is daylight between him and the rest for the first time. Like the Terminator, Sam won't be beaten. He overtakes Cooper and claws his way back before yet another attack. The judges have to be impressed with this, surely. Alex and Byron work together to reel him back in and then once again, there were three. Alex looks like he's growing with confidence and with just three kilometers to go, he launches another attack and is more committed than before. The high tempo proves just too much for Byron. The gap is now beginning to open to our pure climber.
but his tenacity and fighting spirit is a thing to behold. He's down, but not out. His dream is hanging in the balance. And then suddenly, Alex is dropped too. Hey! Come on, Come on, eh? What are you waiting for? Punch it! Kristoff is urging Alex to ride to his strengths, quickly close that gap, and then try and recover in Sam's slipstream. Sam surges past our superstars. What do they make of this, I wonder? It's still so close, but they are flying. And then, just like that, on Sakalobra's iconic loop, Alex regains Sam's wheel. 700 to go, it's diesel versus turbo. Who has anything left in the tank? Alex on the front, Sam poised to strike. And with Jay Vine, last year's winner, fittingly looking on, it's Alex who has just enough to take the sprint. Sam suffers his first defeat of the competition and Alex takes his first win and in impressive style. It's Byron who rolls in to take third and Cooper fighting all the way to the line in fourth. How you feel about that, mate? Uh, a little bit yeah, disappointed, but yeah, I gave it everything. I went a bit hard maybe in the beginning, but yeah. so I started coming back in the end, but just couldn't get back in time. Now our male finalists are up and over Sakalobra. That was some race. Our women are somewhere a few hairpins below me now. My eyes are trained on that stretch of road. And actually, I'm not entirely sure who's going to be taking this one because this is a long old effort, even with Lars putting the brakes on until a few kilometres to go. I don't know. It's anyone's race, isn't it? As Si mentioned, the women's race is a shorter one than the men's, with coach Lars wanting to see how they respond to a different type of effort. For the first part of the climb, they will ride as a group at a steady tempo, and then with 3.2 kilometers to go, they'll stop briefly to compose and ready themselves before racing to the top as a group. With that distance and a 7% gradient, it means the finalists are going to experience around 10 minutes of all-out suffering. So do you think that this challenge should suit Rachel because she's so much lighter than the others? I would, I would think so. After the countdown from Lars, they set off, and Rachel's exuberance and nerve see her struggling to clip in. That leaves Maud on the front very briefly, before Imogen decides that she wants to set her own pace at the front of the quartet, and that's exactly what she does. Well, it is interesting that Imogen has just gone to the front and hasn't looked around once. Not at all, huh? No. So far? I don't think so. For the first half of the test, the other three contestants seem more than content to let Imogen do all the work. Yeah, there's no, there's no tactical aspect no. in that entire approach to what's this. It's like, play yeah. uphill, go fast as possible, maybe someone drops. Yeah, it's like she's doing uh, mountain domestic duties. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. It's not long, though, before someone decides they need to step it up a gear. And that person is Rachel. Oh, Rachel's yeah. gone. Yeah. Come on, Imogen, come on. Here they come, here they come. Oof, it's looking tight actually at this stage. As the line fast approaches, Rachel, Maud and Caitlin are locked together. But an acceleration from Maud sees daylight open up to Rachel, who is perhaps paying for her earlier attacks. Caitlin is distant soon after, and it's another Whoa! exceptional performance from Maud that sees her win the Sakalobra Challenge. Go on, Caitlin, all the way to the line. That's it, take it to the line. Well done. So the last 500 metres was just like the hardest, like one of the hardest things I think I've done. Um, and that climb's like nothing like I've ever raced on. I've never done a switchback before. Um, so I had a couple of those today, they were a bit interesting. I absolutely buried myself um, crossing that finish line. Have you seen any of the finalists that you think, yeah, she's definitely got what it takes? Yeah. Have you, got do, a, but, have, yes. you got, have you got a favourite? Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, personality rise and on the bike also super strong and skills wise too. Okay, go on, tell <laughs> me who it is. Mm -mm. <laughs> It's for me to know, you find out. <laughs> with the Sacalobra hill climbs done, it's time to catch up with the pro team judges to hear their thoughts on our finalists ahead of the second elimination. Okay guys, that was a properly good ride today and a fantastic race. I was on the edge of my seat. I hope you were too. Should we start, we we'll go through the riders in reverse order of how they finished up Sacalobra. Firstly then, it's Cooper. Oh, I, I was not expecting that uh, Sam was making the pace so soon, so hard. So I was thinking that Cooper could have made some extra time to get up the climb and find his rhythm a bit. And I would have expected a bit more attacks uh, instead of the steady uh, tempo that uh, Sam made. Next up, we had Byron. With uh, 60 kilos, going up a longer climb because the effort was maybe a bit too short to make uh, the difference on the on the last climb. Today a 30 minute climb, we thought okay, uh, if you really put some power to weight uh, out of it, uh, then he should end up as the best. And then next up we had Sam. Now before we got to Sacalobra, Sam was way out the back on the descents, wasn't he? What was your, what was your take on that, Christoph? That was the issue that we were afraid of, his bike handling on the road and, and uh, unfortunately he has proven today that uh, there's a lot of work to do. He is 71 kilos on the long climb also today, he just set at a pace that almost killed all the guys. Lastly then, let's turn to Alex. The one thing he has to learn I think is uh, there's always a bit space in suffering, you can always suffer a bit more and the one who suffers the most is mostly the winner as well. He just loves to race a bike. That's maybe a bit uh, the difference with, with some of the other guys. So starting with Imogen. Well, maybe that was a plan to just do it a real long effort, um, thinking that she might have an advantage over Rachel on, on a longer sustained effort. But yeah, then kind of giving up too early. Fighting spirit was a bit missing then towards the end, so she she kind of saw that her tactic wasn't working and then was like, okay, game over. Uh, I was third place and that was Rachel. I think it was really great to see, like we saw some fighting spirit on the second day and she showed that again today, like she really tried to say, okay, what can I do, what can I try? And, and being like that sort of aggressive character on the bike that I mean, that plays to an advantage when you're in a race situation. That's the sort of thing that we're actually looking for. Uh, moving on to second place then, that went to Caitlin again. She really had tried it and I think she took her tactics that she did two days ago and she's like, okay, that didn't work. I'm going to try something different. And she sort of went into what Maud has been doing, actually just sort of sitting in the back almost and like watching the others and then trying to play there. So for that to like, you know, change of tactics and trying to really read the situation, it would have been nice to see her like rewarded with being able to get that win. Mm. But I mean, as we saw that Maud was, yeah, she's difficult to beat on that climb. Yeah, didn't stop Caitlin smiling, but then nothing does, does it? Uh, right on to Maud. Yeah, she's calculating her surrounding there. Uh, she did that in the in the points race on, on Swift, uh, really knowing how many points she has had, even so they were not on display. I mean, calculating who's next and and she really looks what is going on and I think that is a big advantage of her. Uh, so given the characteristics you're looking for in a rider specifically in riding characteristics I, I guess that then riding on Zwift will allow you to take a deep dive into all the data and really pull out the type of rider that you want. Yeah I'm, I'm looking uh, for a rider that has the right level but then in, in that um, she needs to be able to have that uh, shorter pushes uh, to be to be able to withstand race situations and not uh, just be a pure time trialist with the highest power for 20-30 minutes um, and, and that's it. Good evening finalists. Day four, would you believe, and another cracking day, riding some of the world's best roads alongside some of the world's best bike riders. And you, Cy. Si. 
don't forget. Yes. Although thankfully for the riders, and rather understandably, you weren't there that long, were you? <laughs> no, not long at all. Um, now, unfortunately, for two of you tonight, the dream will end here. Two of you will be leaving the Zwift Academy ahead of the final challenge tomorrow. But we are going to start with some good news, because though all of you impressed the judges for various reasons today, two of you in particular stood out to them. So, our female rider of the day today is... Rachel. Well done. So amongst the things that impressed them about you today was how you tackled that final challenge. It was clear you knew your strengths and weaknesses versus the other riders. And although it didn't work out with the win, you couldn't have played it any better. So the male rider of the day is... Alex. Well done, Alex. Ultimately, the guys were super impressed with how you rode Sakalobra today. You won the challenge and also, and very importantly, you dug really deep to reel Sam back in ahead of the line for that sprint. So well done. Now, that does lead us on to the heartbreaking task, I'm afraid, where we'll be delivering the news from the judges as to who will be leaving tonight. So, the two riders leaving ahead of the final day are Imogen. Byron. Sorry, guys. Well done. Well done. Yeah, we sent Byron home today. I expected actually a bit more today on Sakalobra of, uh, of him. We had a long climb, a 30 minute climb. He is the lightweight rider, 60 kilos. I expected him to confirm uh, he has something to, to us. I think that's the main reason why he uh, went home. Uh, today, yeah, it was a climbing day and just a day where I should have maybe performed a bit better than I did. So I sort of had a yeah, gunch feeling that I would probably head home. But yeah, uh, just thankful to Alberson, Zwift and yeah, everyone that made this possible. If I have the opportunity to do it again, I'll definitely be back. Certainly, I did feel like I was in danger of getting sent home, but I'm obviously very relieved to go through to the final round tomorrow. I mean, there were a few areas we've just seen that we thought, okay, compared to the, the other three finalists, then Imogen isn't as strong as them in those areas at the moment. And so, you know, basically that's how we came to the choice, really. Yeah, three guys to go now. Uh, for sure, the, they are really, really close uh, together on, uh, on level. So tomorrow is still a hard day uh, for the riders and also for us to, uh, to judge and to pick out the, the real winner of the academy. And so, two more incredibly talented riders are eliminated from the Zwift Academy Finals. They can head home with their heads held high, but there's no doubt that choosing the next pro cyclist takes no prisoners. No, not at this stage it doesn't, does it? We are heading rapidly towards the finale of the Zwift Academy, aren't we? Can you believe it? From 150,000 people that entered this competition, Zwifting from every corner of the world in their bedrooms, in their basements, and their living rooms. We're now down to six. Six riders, though, that are one step closer to gaining that contract with either Alps and Phoenix or Canyon Sram. Tomorrow, we find out who the two next pro cyclists are. <sighs> Should we go to the bar? What? You haven't got a date with Vanderpool? No, not, not tonight. I mean, I, I said, did he want to come and do wheelies in the car park with me? And um, his manager said, um, can, I give, can I give him a bit of space? I mean, his exact words were, stop stalking Matthew, but I don't think that's what he meant. I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah let's go to the bar. All right, cheers, mate. 150,000 riders from around the globe embarked on the Zwift Academy journey. Now, just 10 contestants remain for the finals. I just feel so lucky that I'm here. I've come all this way from Australia to win this pro contract. I'm not going home without it. To win, they will need to impress the pro team judges. We are really looking to see some aggressive racing. And the professional cyclist superstars from Alpes in Phoenix and Canyon Sram. They're not going to get this opportunity elsewhere and they're not going to get this opportunity again. Come on, come on. What are you waiting for? 
it's the opportunity of a lifetime to win a pro team contract. Two of you will be leaving the competition tonight. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be war. Coming up on the Zwift Academy, the finalists go head to head for the last time. Come on, last push. The pro contracts are on the line. You know, it just comes down to this one two price. I'm just trying to give everything and see what it will bring. It's just going to be hell for leather. And two finalists will go home as professional bike racers. And those two riders are. Welcome back to the Zwift Academy Finals here in Mallorca. Today is the fifth and last day for our riders. By the end of this episode, we will know who our two next professional cyclists are going to be. Blimey. Over the last four days, our finalists have been pushed to their limits with individual fitness tests, head-to-head -head races, and indeed an assessment of their bike handling skills from both the team judges, but also their potential future teammates. They have seen, though, all they need to see, and two cyclists will be leaving here with professional contracts, new bikes, and new kit. we better go and wake them up. There we go, don't we? Good morning, finalists. For the last time, can you believe it? Uh, very well done to all six of you who've managed to make it through to the fifth and final day of the Zwift Academy. This is your last opportunity to influence the judges ahead of their decisions tonight. Because remember, two of you today will go to bed as professional cyclists. You'll be wanting to know what the final challenge is, I'm guessing. Uh, well, it's a head-to-head -head race on Zwift. Total of it is 16 kilometers, the first four of which are pretty flat. But after that, it's the epic KOM. Nine and a half kilometers with a 3.8% average gradient. And there is a bit more climbing to go after that because shortly you'll be onto the radio tower climb, just over a kilometer long at 13.8% average gradient with a maximum of 17. This test is designed not only to see your tactical acumen once again and your physiological performance, but also your resilience to all the hard work you've already done over the previous epic four days. And then lastly, your grit, your determination, and your hunger for success as you battle it out on those brutal final slopes. So I think all that remains for us to say is the best of luck to all of you. Go out there and smash it one last time. So it's been a pretty epic week. It's all come down to today. You guys ready? This moment, it's like the finale. Yeah, it really feels like it. You know, one more battle in the arena. Yeah, one day to go. So we've got all to play for today and I'm just really excited to get it underway. Yeah, it'll be pretty tight, I think, but I think at the moment I'm more just thinking on this afternoon and um, what I'll need to do in that 30, 40 minute race first. I'm nervous, I'm excited and I'm ready to push harder than I ever have before. It's refreshing knowing that the pro contract's yeah. going to Australia. True, true, That's nice. True. But yeah, obviously you're nervous because you want to be the Australian that takes a home yeah, and stuff like sure. that. It's crazy to think that by the end of today, like two of us are going to have pro contracts and we're going to be done. Some of us will be professional cyclists. Yeah. No, nah, it's completely gone over my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know why you're here? <laughs> The finalists will hit the Mallorcan roads for the very last time, taking in some easy miles. The sun is out, but with so much at stake, this really is the calm before the storm. Two of these riders will be leaving the Zwift Academy as professional cyclists. Yeah, so it's the final day of the Zwift Academy, and you know, it just comes down to this one zoop race. The Zwift Academy was Alex's first time leaving his homeland of Australia but he has not shied away from the challenge, displaying his punchy climbing prowess, making his mark as a front runner by taking the win on the Sakalobra challenge. 
you know, my prediction from yesterday, Sam gets a bit overexcited and um, he like kind of goes really hard and he'll make it as hard as he can to try and drop Cooper because he's probably the fastest finisher. I'm going to have to look, look over, see when he's vulnerable. I don't know when we're racing and um, attack him when he's vulnerable. Like just wait for that moment. It's about being patient. So the gloves are off today. It's like absolutely everything, um, all or nothing. Like this is it. Getting this fire and he switched from triathlon at the beginning of this year. So um, to get this experience as our first year on the road has just been unreal. Rachel has been at the pointy end of the women's competition all week. Transitioning from triathlon to bike racing recently, she's shown the judges raw talent and you can't ignore her fighting spirit. Like we just leave that at the door, we go in and it's a 40 minute all out race. Everyone wants to win, everyone wants to impress the coaches. Winning this would change my life in a massive way. It would be really nice to get over there and properly taste the European experience. You know, racing the, in the big pelotons, the stress, the, the rain, even the crashes. I just, I want to really experience that. Sam has displayed impressive power numbers all week. He took the win in the hill climb, showing the judges that he can be more versatile than they first thought. He displayed tactical prowess on episode three's Zwift race. He did come unstuck on the high mountain descents but his numbers don't lie, and he knows how to execute his racing prowess. I do plan on just one massive attack, one big all-out effort that'll see my heart rate reach a new high that it never has before, and then try and stick it out from there. If I do miss out tonight, I think I'll regret it for the rest of my life, knowing that I never, never had that chance. Quite a crazy idea to think about all those workouts I did in my garage at home in the Netherlands. Led me up to here in Mallorca, like look where we are now, it's like amazing. Despite being the youngest of the riders, Maud has taken the week of the finals in her stride and been a standout performer. However, taking on a pro contract at such a young age is a big ask. Is she ready? After living this week, I definitely know that this is what I want. I definitely feel like I've been living a dream the last week. Um, you know, before I'd only ever seen Elise and Eve on TV. Um, I had actually met Cassia before, sort of. I took a selfie with her. After giving up her life in corporate law, Caitlin has gone all in for this pro contract. She shocked coaches with her explosive power in the fitness test and has improved as the week went on. It's been a pretty incredible experience. Yeah, riding with Alps and Phoenix this week has just been an incredible experience. You know, it really motivates you even more to get that pro contract. Cooper burst onto the scene by impressing the judges, taking the rider of the day on day one and two, showcasing his explosive sprinting ability. Racecraft comes naturally to Cooper, and if he makes it to the finish line with the bunch, he will smell blood. I won't be going home until it's over. Like, we're all good mates, but once we get in the ring, once we get in the arena, the gloves are off. I want this contract more than they do. With four Australians in the finals, it's clear to see that that country has a strong pedigree when competing in the Zwift Academy finals, and no one knows that better than last year's winner, Jay Vine. I mean, the Zwift Academy, it's... It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for those who haven't been able to go through the, the normal means of getting a pro contract on, on our side of the world in Australia and uh, in Kiwi land as well in New Zealand. It's, it's really difficult to get noticed and I think that's why we've seen so many Australians make the finals this year and I, I can only, only tell as many people as I can that it's such a great opportunity and there really should be more and more people putting their hands up to, to give this a crack. The moment has come for our finalists to enter the Zwift Arena for the very last time. This is their final opportunity to show the pro team coaches once and for all that they are worthy of that life-changing professional contract. Well, this is it. The three male finalists are now in situ on their home trainers and completing their warm-up. And it kind of feels like, like the moment of truth now, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it is, isn't it? This is the final opportunity to influence the judges before they make their final decision. This is it. They've got to leave it all out on the road. No second chances. The last race will see the finalists tackling the epic KOM climb. 
a 9.5 km drag at an average of 3.9%, but which is followed immediately by the toughest challenge, the super steep radio tower climb, which at 1.1 km long acts as the ultimate sting in the tail, with gradients reaching a tortuous 16%. They're off under the Enjoy Your Ride banner. It's go, go, go for the Zwift Academy finale. So we can see Cooper's power numbers there, and he's riding at 7.2 watts per kilo, just to try and stay with Sam in these early stages, who's gone out strongly. Well, it's not every day that you see a race rolling through an undersea tunnel, is it? But these riders won't be taking in the views here. So, Christoph, this is going to influence your final decision, I guess. What are you looking for? Is it a case of the rider that wins, ultimately, this challenge? Uh, we have to see. We have to wait for the result, I guess. Uh, for sure, the stress will be on now. This is really their final, final challenge. So we really want to see how they handle uh, this last 35 minute uh, effort. They need to get rid of Cooper uh, probably before they, they hit that final uh, three minutes really steep. Because if he is still there yeah. and not fatigued, then they maybe have a problem. All right, well, I can't wait to see that particular yeah. pit. They're gonna be, oh, it's, it's gonna be grueling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So just over four and a half kilometers in, Sam off the front here. He's still rolling that really low cadence, around 80 RPM, climbing at 6% of a gradient. 30 kilometers per hour, though, so he means business. Alex predicted that that might happen, but Sam unable to shake Cooper and Alex, as you can see. Fellow finalists, Byron and Mass, watching on. So onto the bridge. They're still all together. Sam still unable to shake them, no matter how much power he lays down here. He just doesn't have that explosive power, though, it seems, right. to get rid of those fellow finalists. It did go early. As soon as they hit the bottom of that climb, Sam's launched a massive move, but Alex and Cooper have been straight on him. They're not letting him get an inch today. And so they've all backed off a little bit now. Tiny little gaps starting to appear. But you can see Alex is still as cool as a cucumber. Cooper is still 100% in the zone. And it's all on poor old Sam to make that difference as early as he possibly can. He needs to use that big engine of his. But maybe he's got a punch at the end. We just haven't seen it yet. Well, it feels like after what we saw in Secalabra yesterday, this kind of mountain race time trial should really have Alex's name written all over it. But does he have enough left in the tank after a gruelling week of challenges? Well, Sam going again here. This time at over 600 watts. Look at that. Alex and Cooper just sat on his wheel, though, benefiting from the draft, just as they do in road racing. Question has to be, when will Alex or Cooper put in a move now? Getting further up this climb now and into the Alpine village and if you've ridden on Swift before, this will be one of the most ridden roads, I'm sure. I'm part of the original Watopia. Well, listen to that breathing from Sam, the diesel engine. He's really pushing on here, starting to hurt a bit. We're seeing Cooper lose the wheel here. Can he fight to hold on? Of course, he's a sprinter. <laughs> he was dropped yesterday on Sicolobra. We might expect more of that here. Remember, we finish at the radio tower today and the steepest roads are still to go in front of him. They come at the very end. You have to feel it's going to take an absolutely Herculean effort to close this gap today. So Alex has made his move. Alex goes. Alex has gone. We've been waiting for this. This moment was always going to happen. Alex makes his move. He's gone on the smaller gradients as well, just two and three percent. Well, the heart rate's right up there into the 190s as he puts in a hard effort. Nine kilometers of full-on racing already behind him here. I'm not sure Sam has a response, you know. Alex continuing to pull away here. This is really impressive. 
Alex through the tunnel then, and you can see he's maintaining a higher power output than his rivals. He can also see a lot more than normal in a Zwift race. He's riding next to Sam and Cooper physically, so he can see their body language like he could on the road, but he can also sneak a little bit of a look at the additional data on their screens. You can't see that when you're out on the road, can you? We know he loves to race bikes. He's proving to be a real racer as well, and his tactics matching his physiology. Is he riding away for the win here? It certainly looks like it. Uh, Matthew, one of these riders is going to be your teammate as of tonight. What have you made of their performance so far in this final race? Yeah, I think um, especially Sam started uh, really strong this week, but now we see um, yeah, that Alex is uh, getting better and better, so it seems to be uh, also doing this really great today, uh, yesterday as well, so he, uh, he was quite strong uh, towards the end of the week, so he's still very young, he has a lot of potential, so it's going to be a difficult decision. Mm. Cooper not out of this yet though, still plenty of road to go. Can he catch Sam and show the judges something that could help him land the contract maybe? He's been the rider of the day twice, remember? Oh, what we got here, it's the Super Took, it's back, it is back. Of course, it's still allowed in Swift. Well, after nine and a half kilometers, 414 meters of climbing, Alex is over the epic KOM there. Well, a moment to rest on the descent here before his trainer reacts to the pitch of the road. It cranks up the hurt, and for the hardest part of today's climb, it's all go. There are ramps, remember, of up to 16%. Yes, 16%. That's really gonna hurt at this point in any race. Cooper, the final rider to get over the summit and battling to make up time. Well, just like a mountain top finish on the roads, Alex has made the decisive move. He's got rid of his rivals. He now just needs to put in one final effort and leave nothing to chance. So you can see the Flamme Rouge behind Sam Hill there. And just going under it, Cooper Sayers. Fourteen percent on the slopes of the radio tower. Only 700 metres to go. Alex is still in control here. Heart rate right up at 196 now. His cadence has slowed, but his power's still strong as he's grinding his way to the summit. You can see it there in the distance. And here he is, the 19-year-old from the Sunshine Coast has put down his marker in this last challenge. Will this be the difference between him and his rivals behind him on the mountain? This is absolutely incredible. Take a look at this. Alex is absolutely flying. The heart rate right up there. The numbers have been world tour standard. The contract is up for grabs and Alex is riding away to glory. One last big effort. 15 and a half K done. Here he is, Alex going to the line. Incredible stuff. And Alex has absolutely killed it. Alex is there, he wins the race. The race goes to Alex, but will it be his pro contract? It's now down to the pro team judges to decide whether he lands the contract or whether any of the other two have done enough to pivot him to the post. Oh, man, alive. That was some race, wasn't it? I was waiting for Alex to crack. Yeah. From the point at which he attacked all the way to the finish. It didn't happen, did it? In fact, he extended his gap all the way to the finish line. Matt, the numbers he was putting out, insane. And like we said, oh, super high heart rate. Like, how can you be that fresh well, at the end of know. this week? It's very impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, behind, Sam did hold on to second place. Uh, not the win that he was hoping for, of course, but Cooper, that was a really valiant effort from it him, was wasn't as it? Well, because yeah. he is not a climber. The other two are. So to finish so close to Sam, that was an incredible effort. Yeah. He didn't throw in the towel, did he? No. And we wanted grit and determination. Definitely showed it. Right, well, we'll let them finish their cool down, then we'll have a deliberation with the coaches. It's the all important <laughs> announcement. First up, though, the women's race.
So yet again, we leave the boardwalk in downtown Watopia and head out along Ocean Boulevard. Out we go into the mountains and not long before the climbing begins. Mild there, taking a look at her competition. Looks like she enjoys this type of Zwift arena racing. A bit different from racing at home, isn't it? Rachel already up to 10 watts per kilo as she puts the hammer down early, going through the undersea tunnels now. You can see the effort already on the riders' faces. Really early competitive start this. Rachel going again, up the tunnel and out in front. Eleven kilometers to go as the riders go over the segment start for the epic KOM climb. Mal just sitting on Rachel's wheel, saving energy. Well, it's been quite interesting watching the start because Rachel put in a bit of a dig in a very similar way to Sam in the men's race. Not sure if it was to test the waters or trying to sap some of the energy and the power in the legs of Caitlin and Mal. But we started the KOM at this point, so they're going uphill. 6% the gradient right now, all still together. Rachel's still out in front then, and Mild is just sitting on there, energy saving in the draft. Really smart racing again. She's shown it on the roads of Mallorca this week, and her swift racing experience, pretty obvious too. Oh, in the meantime, it's not good news for Caitlin, I'm afraid. Caitlin is dropped. Caitlin is going to have to close the gap on the suspension bridge here. The race could be over if she doesn't, with 10 kilometers still to go. Numbers looking good for the two out in front. Rolling through the Alpine village, it's Mild and Rachel still together. Rachel giving absolutely everything. Does she have enough to drop Mild? Looks as though Mild has decided to make a move, however. Eight kilometers to go. Look at that gap now back to Caitlin. She's only halfway and still plenty of time to get back. She needs to measure her effort, though. Look at Mild. Still nose breathing. Very much in control. This is a really impressive show by the young Dutch woman. So we're now just over the halfway point in terms of distance, at least, and joined by Beth. Your impressions of this race so far? I wasn't sure how they were going to take it on. Um, at the start, it was pretty relaxed, but actually quite early, Mild started to put some pressure on. So it was interesting to see her do that. Um, and she's really like watching the reaction to the others. So um, now I'm really liking that Rachel's fighting so hard. They're not going to change what strength they've got now, but they know what they can try to use it against the others. Like basically they just need to, it's tactics really. The gap from Mild has stretched to 24 seconds. Caitlin, though, is holding her gap to Rachel. Five k's to go now as Rachel is into the tunnel. The snow line roads of Watopia. Has she got anything left to make a change over the final third of the race? Yeah. This isn't a done deal yet because Lars has just been showing me uh, some data from Maud, which is her core body temperature. And as you might imagine, doing this kind of effort, she's getting pretty warm. But also, he points out the fact that the heart rate is starting to drop. Now, in an effort like that, it's not necessarily a good sign when you combine the two. So it's not over yet, not by a long shot. Maud is just sitting at over five watts per kilo. This is another incredible performance. Now, has Mild overcooked it? It remains to be seen. One thing for sure, the gap is a big one, and she's eating up the road in front of her. Under the epic KOM banner she goes, and Mild picks up a new power-up. Now, what would it be? Will it help on that super steep gradient to come? Mild, in the meantime, on the descent, the Flamme Rouge now, one kilometre to go for Maud. Takes a sip from that bottle, looks around. She's got a minute lead over Rachel. I really can't see Maud throwing this away now. Now Rachel over the top of the climb as well. 
I've been keenly watching Mal since you just updated us on her cool belly temperature and her heart rate going down. But she seems to have been able to push through it, doesn't it? And yes. she's almost like she's telling her body, no, you've got to keep going. It's like willpower. Yeah, I mean, it's quite incredible to watch, isn't it? Like, we've not really seen it go this hard yet no. this week, have we? And she's gone from the very bottom, which when I was asking Lars earlier, he was like, no, I don't think she will. And this is quite a show of defiance. She really wants this contract. So. Well, she does, doesn't she? Because she doesn't need to go quite as hard as she is now because her advantage is a minute and seven seconds. Rachel works, Rachel tries, but she will not catch this teenage sensation from the Netherlands. You could see the aero power up, the blue icon above her head. All important part of the Zwift gameplay. Mild out in front, Mild on her way to victory. The race will be hers. Will the contract? Will Canyon Shan be concerned by her age, maybe? We will see. Last year's winner, Neve Bradbury, only 18 when she won. She signed an extension. Here, though, Maud is going to finish the job. And she wants to give more. Just look at that. She's out the saddle. She's coming to the line. Maud makes it hers. Over the finish line, collapsing in exhaustion. Superb. Absolutely superb. Maud wins. This is Rachel who's going to finish second. Not even a fighting performance from her was good enough to get near Maud on the day. And Caitlin comes across the line as well after being dropped around a halfway up. Maud head and shoulders above the rest. She wins. Rachel second. Caitlin third. There are your women's final race results. Well, that's it. We are done and dusted with the 2021s with the Academy, except for the important part of announcing the winners. But what a race again. Oh, my word, that was a race. I was really quite emotional at the end there. Like, you know, that was incredible effort from all three women. And the sprints at the end, you know, at the end of that all-out effort. Yeah. Mount putting out 450 watts on the way to that one. Like, yeah, despite overheating and heart rate going down gradually. Yeah, it yeah. was quite the effort from all of them at the end. Crowd obviously helps, but amazing to see them lift it at the end of all those challenges. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it really was something to behold. Right, we need to go and have a debrief with the coaches, don't we? Because whilst the riding might be over, the most important part of the Swift Academy finals is about to happen. After two more thrilling races, the finalists have done everything they can. It's now up to our pro team judges to make their decision on who will be joining their teams. And now it's decision time. We'll start with Cooper. He looked a bit tired. After all the challenges today, not only Cooper, to, uh, to say it honestly, uh, we saw the first signs of fatigue with, uh, with some riders. But on the other hand, we have to say it, um, it was again a climbing challenge. And of course, as sprinter type, it's not that he did uh, bad at all. None of these days have been easy for him. He's a bit more of a sprinter, so in a real stage race, he's uh, a lot more time in the back, uh, staying out of the wind, saving energy. That's what, not what he could do here. Let's move on then to Sam. For me, I still uh, stay a bit with my opinion of the, of the beginning of the week. His abuse of power a bit, with his low cadence gear always, really yeah, destroying the muscles uh, almost. At the end of all the challenges and from day to day, the fatigue really, really comes in. And I think he pays that a bit uh, on day five. And then lastly, today's winner in fine style. It was Alex. From a 19-year-old kid, you want to see it confirmed with all the circumstances. And just confirming that from day to day and at the last challenges, yesterday and today, then performing even better. Yeah, that tells a lot about the, the physical capacities too. Yesterday, his Sakalogra time was a really good time. We had some uh, checks on the KOMs of Strava and he had the same time as Simon Yates. So. That's already something. Okay, guys, so we are going to be announcing the winners very soon. How, how tough is the decision going to be? I think it's clear. After final thoughts shared from Alpes in Phoenix, it's over to Canyon SRAM for the last deliberations.
Lars, Beth, it's my final interrogation of the week, which I'm sure you're very relieved about. Uh, we'll go in reverse order as we do for the challenges. So today, for the race on Zwift, it was in third place, Caitlin. If you're looking just at age, you may think that she has had more training, uh, more years of training, but actually that's not the case. And so then when you reflect on that, then it can be expected that this like, level of fatigue day after day, uh, that today Caitlin arrived and was feeling yeah tired. But to, I mean, to her credit, she, she did try and push, and I'm sure at the end she gave uh, got everything out of herself. Uh, second place on the day was Rachel. Yeah, I think there was some little, not real full attacks, but some touching on, on the competition there at the very beginning. And uh, she was up there for the fight and then just uh, struggled a bit when uh, Maud uh, really launched her attack. Uh, and on to our winner, again, with the perfect score, in fact, with all the challenges over the last five days. Maud with a 1 minute and 37 second advantage by the time she got to the finish line. I mean, she couldn't have done any more this week. She's really calculated with her, with her efforts and with her tactic and how she reacts to things. She you know, is putting in some efforts, but deliberately looking to left and right to see what the other two finalists were doing and how they were coping with what she was uh, giving to them, really. And so, I mean, this is beyond her years of experience, I think, in racing. So very impressive. Well, you've got a few more moments to make your decision about tonight. I'll be quizzing you in about half an hour's time. And just after that, we'll deliver the news to the winner. It's a nervous wait for our finalists, whilst behind closed doors the pro team judges make their final decisions about who will be taking home those pro team contracts. Finalists, 150,000 amateur riders entered the Zwift Academy and your talent shone through from the best the world had to offer. And now, after five more intense days of competition and training, it's time to announce the two winners, the two recipients of the prize that everyone has come here for, professional racing contracts. So the judges have not only been crunching the numbers, but also assessing how you coped with five intense days, physically and also mentally. And let it be said, the standard of all 10 finalists, not just the six of you remaining here, has been incredibly high this year. It has, but after much deliberation, the coaches have come to their final decisions. Two of you are about to be professional cyclists. And those two riders are... Maud Alderman. And Alex Bogner. Congratulations, Well done. Guys. <laughs> well done to all of you. <laughs> I just found out I'm going to be a professional bike rider for Albus and Phoenix and I'm just like, oh, I'm like, like lost for words and I'm really shell-shocked to be honest. Yeah, this is going to be absolutely life-changing. Um, I'm going to be in Europe next year racing my bike for a, a professional team, you know. It's just, oh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I can describe how I feel right now. It's. Yeah, it's unreal. I didn't see it coming, like I wasn't expecting it or something. It's, no, I don't know what to say. It's like I don't can put words into it, like it's unreal. Couldn't be more happy for him, honestly. He's such a hardworking kid and he's, yeah, it's just the, just the beginning of things to come for him. So, so stoked for him. But I think he has a lot of potential, what he showed this week at that age, it's, uh, it's incredible. and. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward as well to see what he can do in, uh, in the races. If we didn't know going into the race today, we definitely knew afterwards. Like, I've never seen somebody be able to, to dig that deep. Well, we're really excited to, to have her for next year and uh, we're expecting uh, already a very strong first season. Yeah, I think uh, Alex outperformed over the whole week in general. The first uh, days were still a bit hard to judge because the level of the riders was really close uh, next one to another. But the last two days, Alex really made a difference. And if you can make it uh, at the end with all the pressure and all the eyes on you. Well, what an incredible week that has been yeah. from start to finish. I mean, for the riders, enjoyable, but very intense. The experience of a lifetime, I'd imagine, yeah. but heartbreaking for eight of them. That's right, yeah. For those eight riders, the dream of winning the Zwift Academy is over. But their dreams of turning professional 
are not necessarily. No, very true. Although that dream has just come true from Aud and Alex. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's also been an incredibly enjoyable week for us as well. And for that, we have to thank a few people. We do indeed. Firstly, we've got to say a huge thanks to Zwift. Firstly, for creating the Academy. I think it's fair to say, isn't it, that they are the only brand in cycling that are able to do this with their platform. And the fact that they're running it is fantastic for the sport. We've got to thank also the people behind the scenes who created this series. Uh, also the pro riders and staff. They've been brilliant with us all week. They have. And incredibly, the finalists as well. They've just been a fantastic bunch of people.